Okay. Episode 12. I'm going to get started here. Hopefully we're connecting. I'm going to double check everything. And a nice little... See if everybody kind of hears me while people are piling in. Okay, that seems to be going. Okay, Twitch hasn't kicked in yet. Hopefully people can see me. There we go, Twitch is starting. Nobody so far, so I'm just gonna be hanging here by myself until people start piling in. Make sure we're all connected. Okay. Hey, infinite. First! There we go. There we go, it starts piling. I guess it took like a little bit to get started. How's it going, Adib? <laughs> For a second there, I was like, is anybody can connecting today? So, um, since I took a break off of a week or whatever. So, good. Good, Adib. How are you doing? I'm going to let uh, a few more people pile in before I start my spiel and then uh, start for the day. So we can kind of get started here in a moment. Hopefully everybody's doing okay for the California fires and everybody's safe. Um, so things hopefully get better there soon. Here in Texas it's a little bit cold. So my hands are kind of freezing up on me. And I'm I got the type thing I think going. There we go. Ah, good. Yes, you definitely wanna air purifier is good to actually take out all that smoke. I saw some insane pictures and stuff, so it was pretty horrifying. So um so okay, I've got about twenty else start. Let's see. I'm gonna put on my normal stuff. Um, welcome to episode 12. How's it going, Michael? Um, my name is Brett Briley. I'm going to be doing some creature exploration today again. Um, kind of what I've been doing to kind of show some uh, design and, you know, just to kind of sculpt for fun. So you can find some of my work at uh, www.bbriley.com. I also have a shop uh, where you can purchase some of my different busts. So my t-shirts and stickers, I'm going to be slowly adding to that pretty soon. So if you guys don't mind stopping by, I appreciate it. Um, I about, you can find me there along with my connections in case you guys want to add me. I only have a few uh, open and dropped two people, I think, to my Facebook. So if you haven't added me as your friend, please do so. Um, but I'm at the cap. Um, so you can also find me the Art of B. Briley, uh, Brooke Briley on there as well. Um, and uh, in my work, you can find some general work. Uh, here, go down on my 2D and my 3D work. Uh, 2D is more of my old illustration because uh, I came up through the concepting. And so Disney, all kind of stuff, you could find it there. And then 3D work is more of my um, game stuff and other, other kind of projects I've had uh, the luck of being a part of. Press, same thing for just some of my videos from what you saw here, interviews, to kind of listen to more of my BS if you guys want to check it. You could also find on uh, ArtStation dot com forward slash spark I my art station page with things i need to update that a little bit more i'm trying to get better and you can also find me on uh, instagram.com forward slash b briley underscore art uh, this is where i've been trying to kind of update on the zbrush live demos and stuff i've been doing so how's it going dimitro how's it going riangle um and moron awesome to hear that you're a cg artist as well hey arnold how's it going gundam and uh oh Greetings from Texas to Poland. That's pretty cool. That's a good distance. Also, I am part of a cool uh, group of guys uh, called Grim. We are Grim together. Uh, James Kane and Martin Verhoeven, very talented artists. We uh, got a, got together after doing some ZBrush competitions in ZBrush Summit and created uh, this where you can find um, work where we're doing uh, bus 3D kits. This is uh, Martin Verhoeven's Rise Up kit. 
This is my Aqualion, James Kane's Lighthouse guy, and then a couple of my different kits that I also have on here. We're going to be adding uh, James has got a Bluebeard uh, kit coming here pretty soon, and uh, Martin's working on the next piece, which is pretty pretty cool. So, and I'll have something up there as well. You can also find about us on this through there. There's James. There's Martin. So James is right here. There's myself, and there's Martin. This is the only picture I've ever seen him up smiling, so it's rare. And then you can find our work, which is the general one. So, how's it going? Side effects. I'm going two three. So, and uh, and then of course you can find us on Instagram as well as uh, Instagram.com forward slash We Are Grim. Uh, we're just starting this one, so we appreciate any kind of followers. So, okay, on to the day. So, um, let's go ahead and start. I think today we're going to kind of just go over top of uh, this is the S arch. I don't know how you pronounce that one, where you can actually. Um, uh, break down the body so it's just a scan I, I just been basically going over top of the way you bring in a 3d scan and instead of just kind of making the nose a little bit bigger or whatever and calling it done I use it to kind of help it help you guys kind of go from instead of a sphere and trying to go through the anatomy you can kind of build off using some of the creatures uh, or some of the ideas and facial features you can build your creatures from so um, and again just have fun with it uh, don't worry about it you know if you create something great if not you know that's just art over rinse and repeat until you get something. It's going. How's it going, Peter? P P uh, Peter. Yeah, I guess it's Peter. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry if I mispronounce your names and everything else. Um, so all I did is I, I brought this in and I took off a certain section of it. It's not kind of really clean. As you can see, I just did a zebra mesh or whatever. The one that was on there wasn't clean. So I made a duplicate um, of the head and I used... Uh, if you hold down control shift and you come up to here and you go to trim curve when it's dynameshed then you can actually use this to cut um, the head and stuff so you can actually take it off now if you uh, this is all I did is I slapped it off uh, sliced it off at that point in time if you hold down control shift and then you let go of the shift you can actually move it down and what this does now instead of totally just uh, flattening everything to the line it'll actually when I let go of that will actually cut um, your and poly groups for it. So once I did that, I went ahead and I just did Z remesh to kind of clean it up, and I made a symmetrical. Um, so I have an even. If I turn on my symmetry on X, I actually will have it um, symmetrical. Because uh, whereas the beginning one, you saw the head is off asymmetrical, and then I just took the left side, flipped it, cleaned it up, and I took the right side, cut it. So uh, whatever head I'm going to start with, um, you know, I'm just going to pick one of these heads. I'm going to go ahead and make a duplicate um, from this one right here. So I have it as a backup, and I usually just throw it down. Because when I'm going to start, I want to have the levels. A lot of people ask me why I do this process is because I actually like to start pretty low. Um, I actually like to sit there and move and push and pull and try to get some different things going. I'm looking for the silhouette. I'm looking for um, some of the forms to kind of play off of. So it's just a, it's a really quick start. If I work in high where a lot of people do, then it's really slow and it's very difficult to, to do this stuff. Um, yeah, Ryan will just rinse and repeat until you get something. It's, uh, it, you know, as long as you have fun, that's art should be fun. That's all you should really care. Um, it, you know, don't worry about if you can draw or not. Um, traditional art can come in a lot of different forms. A lot of people are like really good sculptors or can be architects or whatever. It breaks it down. It's very difficult to be good in every single different area. Um, I came from a traditional drawing background, um, but then I slowly went into sculpting through this one. So, and ZBrush, you know, could be good for painting a lot of different stuff. Um, I can't, Adiba, I can't remember where I got this one. I think this is 1024. It's there. Um, I purchased it, and it kind of came with the breakdown of the, the muscle group and stuff like that. Um, he kind of looks like an alien, so I was just picking him, and I was trying to find a different head. Um, I like to try my local, my local symmetry. If I if I do dynamic, um, I'm going to go to my draw, and I'm going to knock this back down to, like, 35, a little bit less reduced if I do do my dynamic on there um, for my perspective. Um, also, I'm going to... Go ahead and um, bring in a couple different things before I start kind of pushing and pulling this guy. So I'm going to kind of just start playing with the head, trying to get some things kind of going on that I want. Um, and so I'm just going to kind of build up some of his forms. But a, a lot of times what I do when I'm kind of trying to decide what I'm going to do with this creature, 
or when I'm kind of building, like let's say if I want his eyes out a little bit more, if I want to kind of, you know, decide how I'm going to kind of create this creature, I need to kind of build in um, different types of um, forms with it. If I don't want to just keep with the head, a lot of times I'd like to bring in something else uh, as a kit bash uh, you know, object and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to append quick sphere and I'm going to just kind of, you could either use the scale option to bring it down to what you want or you can actually go to deformation and then use unify. Um, if it doesn't, it should snap, should take into account what's already in the scene and bring it down. If not, you could always use the size option right here too um, to actually get um, pretty close. But the, the new gizmo that they have is pretty sweet. Um, I have a tendency to like it, but if I'm going to, let's say if I want to kind of make this a little bit larger, because I might bring this into like a large head kind of stuff and start to just play with this guy and, and uh, whatever kind of form. So let's just say like this might be, be my brain that I'm going to be playing with at some point in time or like a larger head. Um, I also uh, will, let me go ahead and make a duplicate. I'm going to shrink this down and kind of bring it inside. So if you turn on the solo, you can actually see it. If you do transparency, you can actually see what I'm what I'm doing. I'm just going to use this as a object to, to bring in another object onto. So um, it, it, I mean, ZBrush is just like, uh, it takes a little bit. I mean, for sure, it's pretty deep. It's a, the most powerful program I've ever used. So, um, but with it, you know, good art comes time. You know, just, it, it's going to take you a lot of time. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I actually created a brush a long time ago of my skulls. I think I've shown this before, where you can actually bring in a lot of different objects. So if you use them a lot, um, I have a, a larger one where I have my skeletons and skulls and anatomy and lungs and all that kind of stuff. But this one's my sm smaller brush um, to help. How's it going, hip hop? And how's it going, Onder? Uh, welcome. So this is where you can actually create the brush. And as you can see, I, I have like a brain brush. So in case I didn't want to bring in that sphere, I wanted to kind of bring in this this brain. Um, as you can see here, by having that object, it's a duplicate. If I drag that out, okay, that's going to, let me turn off dynamic. Uh, oh, a lot of times when you're bringing in stuff, turn off dynamic just in case. So let's just say I want to kind of bring in that a brain here for this object and but I still want to use this sphere to, to bring it in. I'm just going to go ahead and go to geometry and I'm going to go down to, I'm sorry, not geometry, split. And I'm just going to say group split because one is masked, one is not. So I have that extra ob you know, option to keep that uh, in there. And then I'm going to go back to that brush again and I'm going to grab, and I'm hitting, up here you can actually see you have the different objects up here within it. You can also hit M, which will bring up the multi-mesh insert brush option. So wherever, if you have 40, within that brush, it'll bring up all 40. If you have two, it'll be two. So I'm going to grab, I probably will grab this skull right here. And I have the symmetry on, so I'm just trying to find the middle. And I'm holding down shift. Even though this object isn't symmetrical at the moment, um, I'm going to go ahead and split this off again. And what happened here is it actually took every single option because all of them were broken up as a poly group because usually when I create a brush I'll have the te teeth separate in case I want to play with it. So what I could do now is I could just click on here on this object as you can see I'm going to turn off the solo and my ghost um, and so it's grabbing there's the tooth right there okay so I'm just going to go in down to merge and I'm just going to go merge down and I'm going to turn off stop asking me because I'm going to do quite a bit of this so what I'm doing is I'm grouping back the teeth together um, on this object. I want to go ahead, that's the top teeth or the bottom teeth right now. If I come back here to the top teeth, I'm skipping over this object. If you hold down shift in this, we'll bring it to the bottom so it's not going to get in my way. I'm going to come back up to here to where that's the bottom teeth and I'm going to go back to where I'm going to merge down and so I'm going to grab all those teeth minus that sphere. Okay, And I'm going to use this to come one up above. Um, so if I want to sit there and attach this jaw to the, this bottom tooth right here, these teeth, then all I have to do is merge down one more time. If I want to have this skull with these teeth, then I'll just go merge down and I can bring those together. Now, I could have done that when I was bringing all those things previously. I could have all, you know, just easily said, um, I want to grab all these. I could either mast 
Um, and then I could go down to my polygroups, and at this point in time, I could just say group visible. And so those now are all a polygroup. And then I could come down here before I'm merging these guys together and say group visible. And then I can just go ahead and merge down yet again to have that object in case I want to move this back here. So hold down um, Alt if you want to move the gizmo. So now that I have that, I'm going to just go back to my regular brushes, turn this off, get rid of that. And let me just move these up. So I'm going to kind of use my gizmo. It's asymmetrical right now. So on the skull, if I want to go ahead and make them symmetrical uh, to where whatever I do on the one side, because I'm going to probably be pushing and pulling this, I want to have it symmetrical at the point in time. So let me do that. How's it going, Alejandro? How's it going, Petra? Appreciate you guys showing up. I'm going to come down here, and I'm just going to use my deformation again. Uh, where to go? Deformation. And it's pretty low, so I'm going to kind of just go to Smart Sim, see if that works, and it didn't quite work. Now, a lot of times if it's really kind of um, confusing, see right there, the symmetry is going to be off. You want to kind of get it as close as possible. Even if I did resim, it's going to help a little bit, but as you saw right there, I'm losing the teeth. So another way to kind of do this is if you're just going to um, make a duplicate just in case, and you can sit there and say to geometry, modify, and just say mirror and weld. And so when you say mirror and weld, it's going to take whatever side you have, which right now uh, it might actually weld the teeth together. As you can see, it's kind of these two might be welded. You can uh, I could have separated those teeth out if I was really worried about it. Again, it depends on how clean you want to be. Um, but uh, I'm not really worried about this. So that is my um, symmetrical one. So if I want to keep that in there, hide this, I'll let this save. And I'm going to turn on transparency and, and uh, I'm expecting some packages, so I excuse in advance for my dog kind of freaking out. So I'm going to use this skull to kind of get an idea of you know how I want to have my placements because I'm going to start making a you know use that to kind of push and pull and come into my design of you know the creature. So let's say I want to use this guy to where I am going to let's just bring these out. And I'm going to play off of the fact that, you know, maybe um, he's got some really wide ocular things. Or even, even the fact that maybe this is going to be like some kind of skull apparatus to where it kind of wraps. And, um, you know, I don't know. I'm just playing around right now. I'm using the skull. Just because I have a skull doesn't mean I have to treat it just exactly like a skull. I could say that this is going to be some kind of um, bone apparatus or something that comes into Because, again, I'm just creating the design. I could still use a lot of the stuff that's in there for the cavity of the nose. I could, um, you know, bring this out and mess with this a little bit. So if I'm going to kind of... Play it to where it's going to wrap and it's more of a decorative. Um... Jax! Jax! Sorry. Again, he's cleaning himself. <laughs> so it's all I can hear is licks. It's very frustrating. Um, and this right now does not have any kind of uh, definition. So because I brought it in as a low, so I'm just going to add like another layer to it so I can start kind of. You know, maybe adding, um, cleaning this up to kind of create my shape. Again, I'm not quite sure what I want to do yet, guys. Uh, how's it going, uh, Vavrink from Austria? Very cool. Um, oh, yeah. I, I, right now, a deep. I'm not too sure what I'm making. Um, I'm kind of just trying to bring in... This is where a lot of times, guys, when I get a little bit stuck, I just kind of toss things together and I start looking. I start thinking for forms. Right now, I just know, no, not a cat. <laughs> so let's bring in, uh, let's bring in that brain. Um, so either I want to kind of bring in this brain to where um, maybe I want to have some of that exposed. I don't know. Or let me go ahead and use what I kind of started here to maybe it's going to be. Um, 
or maybe even covers up some of that brain that you can actually see on the side. Uh, in the section here. I don't think I want the ears for this time, so I'm gonna probably just kind of like say that this is kind of some flaps. So I think I need to define out the eyes to kind of help me a little bit. I'm gonna also go down to my um, edit and I'm gonna do my inactive subtool. What I did there, guys, is I, I don't wanna have um, gradation between the two. I want to actually, uh, a lot of times when I'm seeing and I'm creating, I want to see what it's going to look like all together. So by having it um, pretty similar in the fact that it's uh, the same tone, then it kind of helps me blend and see the shapes. So let's say like this is going to be maybe um, in a way sort of like horns, like uh, or, or it's embedded with um, the shell shape that's going to kind of echo it and then I'm going to probably use my in flat and let's make the eyes just a little bit okay so what I did is I used the um, damn standard brush and I kind of brought it over so I'm going to kind of I was just making the eyes just a little bit more closed and I'm going to from the side, I want to play with that human aspect. So I'm going to probably, let's see, take out the nose. I took out the ears. I'm going to take out the nose and the normal nose. Maybe make them a little bit more sheep um, aspect or or defined. Maybe even I can see where that nose is underneath. So there, there's the skull nose. This is this object right here. So maybe I can bring that one forward and down. Because um, a lot of times it's like I'm, I'm interacting with the uh, object the, that is underneath and the material on top of it so and like this is going to be kind of you know I can start defining some of the face so if I'm going to kind of have this interact just like I did here so maybe I might um, push and pull that and then now I'm looking for form so if I have this jawline let's probably bring this out a little bit more and I'm going to go down my levels a little bit because I'm going to kind of probably give myself a little bit more neck just to play with it more of a sweeping neckline to define it so I'm not kind of all up in one little area and again I'm very low on my amount of polys that I'm working with but it's just going to help me I'm looking for shapes right now so by taking out those eyes, I mean taking out the uh, the ears and taking out some of the nose, I have kind of like a weird little creature kind of thing. And again, I can I can either start coming into where if I raise up his eyes, he's going to be you know a little bit more somber or thinking that kind of stuff. So um, you know just intermixing these two things together, I could decide if again if I'm going to go toward the mean direction, happy direction get a lot of notifications um, that kind of makes a, a difference so um, and I don't want to make a cat sorry Arnold <laughs> so, or at least I'm not seeing a cat yet but but by a lot of times concentrating on the eye section is really going to define my direction of the character that I'm gonna make is um, because it, it I'm, I'm not doing human I'm I started from a human scan but that does not mean I have to stay with any human I'm, I'm going non-Star Trek where I'm stuck to the uh, the actor underneath and stuff. I want to kind of sit there and just kind of create and and decide to to make this. Now if I even took these to where these were a little bit more sharp or, or whatever, that's going to help start to define. Maybe I, I don't see this underneath. Maybe it's kind of where um, his eyes just a little bit heavier. And let me bring these forward. So it's almost kind of like these are coming out and around. And, and like I said, I was thinking that they're going to be kind of decorative. Um, so I'm going to kind of maybe define out some of where it, it's going to come from the cheekbones. Because I'm going to define the cheekbone, the ocular area here, pushing those out. Because it's almost kind of like I'm having you focus just on the eyes. So if I want to make those eyes a little bit bigger by doing that. I could 
and because I'm I have this shape I'm gonna probably try to echo it a little bit to kind of unify it and then I'm gonna probably take this top of the forehead and probably bring it forward a little bit because from the side I'm, I'm seeing too much of in my mind this I, I, uh, I want it sticking out but I want to right now it almost looks like he's got it's a hairdress but I'm going to pull those out okay I'm grabbing to this one But I want to kind of take it to where this, um, maybe from the front, you have it to where, right now he kind of looks like an ace, uh, whatever, spades, like ace of spades or whatever, like you have that, that clover or any kind of shapes that you're kind of doing. You want to make sure that from the different objects, uh, sides, you're looking for shapes and forms and how it balances. So from the front, um, do I want to define out just the head? Too much of the head, not enough. Um, or do I want to sit there and bring it to where it's almost blending um, from that? I think this is a little fatter spade kind of shape. And I, I see the spades because I have this shape and I'm going straight up. Now to do that, I can take that away by just balancing that out again. Um, so. Uh, Dimitro, uh, bust in the portfolio. If, he, if he's learning ZBrush, I would actually kind of focus on just like more props. Um, uh, anatomy is very difficult. I mean, a lot of people sit there and want to want to do anatomy because it is fun. I mean, I, I definitely enjoy it. Um, I'm glad I get to do it, and I'm lucky enough to do it. But the problem is, is that it's there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of phenomenal artists out there that really um, make it difficult. And uh, character jobs are just less in demand because you know uh, they don't need them too many of them to be quite honest so um i'd probably suggest him kind of concentrating you know on zbrush zbrush is great for organics um to be quite honest but you still could do a lot of different things with it they have a great hard surface tool that you can kind of you know play around and, and um and learn it so it's just like i said it's a it's a phenomenal program they got a lot of different things to allow you to jump around so let me kind of just define up like if i'm going to I don't know if I want to bring in that that um, the brain kind of stuff, but maybe I'm gonna blend this to the neck a little bit. I'm still debating on how I want to do this, and maybe it's just a big skin fold. Um, and I understand it's starting to get kind of phallic, so I got to be careful. Unless unless I want to sit there and create that in there. How's it going, Paul? Always great to see you as well, buddy. Thanks for stopping by. Um, hip hop, uh, just a quick question. Maybe an answer. And, and um, I haven't, Gozi I used a, a while ago. I haven't really had a tendency to use Gozi too much lately. Um, but it's it's awesome um, that it's there uh, if you actually do need it. It, um, it just depends on your workflow. A lot, a lot of times I have a tendency to, to um, keep to the certain workflow, although I'm you know, with UV peel and a couple other stuff that they, they have coming, um, my workflow is going to probably change. I just got to figure that out, uh, what I like, uh, what I can use. Uh, I'm actually probably going to show, a lot of you guys have been asking me um, to uh, show some low poly aspects. Um, most of the times when I do low poly, I use Max um, uh, to build my low poly. Although ZBrush is, I use ZBrush in the fact that I'll take uh, Dynamesh, or I'll take the zero mesher and I'll use it. Um, so it definitely comes in handy. It's there for my for my um, tool uh, to create my low poly. And then I use um, poly paint to do a lot of my poly painting for my base uh, color that I'll bring into um, substance. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably show, um, even though this is very um, this is for ZBrush, I'll probably bring in. Uh, I'll do a low poly quickly for you guys after I do the poly paint and I'll just toss it to, to Substance Painter to actually show you because ZBrush is, is um, so good at interacting with other kind of programs and you do have a tendency to kind of jump around back and forth. And I did with Gozi uh, um, when it was working uh, uh, better in the fact that it, I, uh, I don't do base meshes as much as I used to before. I used to kind of 
go back and forth in Max. Now I kind of have a tendency to do mo the, with a zebra mesh and a couple other stuff. I just create those in ZBrush, knock it to Max, and then I just kind of clean up a little bit with the tools. But um, that's the reason I don't use GoZ as much as I used to. Um, okay, so I'm sorry, I'm kind of I'm not feeling up to uh, feeling that great. I think I'm coming down. My ears are kind of red. I'm feeling a little tired. So sorry if I'm babbling, guys. I'm trying to. Uh, I took a break last week for uh, some projects, and so I was like, no, I wanted to make sure I keep this up, and because uh, I enjoy talking to you guys, but also just to keep myself on these. So um, now that I have this sort of going, um, I'm starting to get the shape. I'm going to go back to the eyes. So as I said, I'm defining my forms. I'm trying to figure out. I'm going to probably bring in some eyes. So because I don't want to generally just make him kind of like um, closed eye. I'm going to define out his mouth here just a little bit. Maybe maybe to where it's kind of a little bit more pursed, like he's um, interacting a little bit. And I'm going to build up some layers of skin. And all I'm doing is I'm just sweeping back and forth, guys, with my damn standard brush. And I'm going to start to turn. So once I start doing this, to define, I might bring, um, since I'm going to have some sharp angles from this piece right here, like this is going to be kind of bone, so I'm going to use my trim dynamic to kind of sharpen this up a little bit, because it is bone. Uh, once I define things a little bit more, I might actually use this to push and pull this out, I'm use my move tool a lot to kind of, so if I look around, that's going to kind of start changing the shape of this. I want to have certain areas that are going to flow and certain areas that are going to be kind of um, soft. And I want most of my flesh area to kind of really be defined. I'm going to use it to push back. So I'm kind of making him a smart alien. Um, last couple of aliens and stuff were a little bit more... Um, Vicious. So let's make this guy a little bit more towards he's kind of like a uh, not a priest or you know from alien. He's just got a little bit more of a design element to where he's a smart elder type aspect. And by doing that, I'm going to probably I can still have you know elders can have some furrowed brows kind of stuff, but. I'm using this as decoration, so maybe the warriors would actually have smaller ones or younger, so um, it's almost kind of like tusks of an elephant. These are kind of going to grow the larger, the more elder he goes, you know, you can actually start to make a couple different ones like these might actually start to come out and you can change a couple different ones. So let's say if I was creating these guys, um, creating a series, then I could actually then use some of the ornaments or aspects that I'm bringing into a character, I can say, okay, um, they're they're different hierarchy, and it's pretty easy to kind of you know create those from that. All right, so and even though I had that no nose there from from initial, I could even probably use like um use this as like a nose within a nose again, use an in flat to kind of build up that flesh. Um, I love the in-flat brush because it kind of allows me to kind of put a lot of weight to the flesh. Damn standard is a great brush to kind of just define. And I keep very simple on my brushes and everything for just to make it a little bit easier for anybody that's kind of trying to learn some of these techniques or just when they're sculpting. Um, I don't want you to get overly involved um, worrying about what kind of brush I have to use or what technique exactly I have to use. When you're creating, you should just have some fun and just kind of, you know, um, design on the fly. You know, push and pull and see what's going to work. Uh, probably make his neck a little bit more. Now, on the other scans, I kind of had a lot of... I was using the older character so he had kind of a lot more interest all I have to do if I wanted to add some skin I could just use the damn standard brush to kind of sweep in and again I'm playing with every single line I do I'm kind of trying to direct my eye around the creature so um, and maybe is I might have a little bit sharper jaw underneath here 
to meet up with this little section in here. And then I can use this piece to kind of define this out a little bit. Now I've got some weird, that's the, I think those are the teeth <laughs> that are starting to come out. So, and I'm going to, I can clean this up here in a little bit. Uh, but let's get some eyeballs into it. And I'm going to tool save as, I'm going to save this really quickly. Um, just in case. Thank you, Demetra. Uh, no, I mean, inspired, I mean, it's like you, you see a lot of the aliens and the shapes. I do have a tendency to, I, 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 I like to make larger heads usually. I like to define more of in like cheekbone, like they've been starving for a little while. So I have a tendency to kind of pull certain shapes. Um, but I'm just trying to play around, trying to just get some ideas. Um, and by me tossing different objects in there, it can change it on the fly. So if I decided to throw some lungs in there, I mean, that's where one of my kits actually just, I took a heart that I did um, and I just chucked them on the side and I used them as lungs. I mean, it's just kind of, it, and then it kind of was like, oh, okay, if I did that, I can kind of, you know, go this direction. So um, I was just thinking when I started this today, I was just like an older alien. I was trying to think of, you know, trying to pull in some of those kit bashes and I and I'm, have a tendency to, again, to go back to where I want a larger head. Um, so it's kind of, I don't know. There's so much good art, so many things around. I, I am inspired, but I'm not really paying attention to it right now. Um, why do I, Deeb, why do I use Max instead of Maya? That's what I started with. Um, I, uh, the first company I started, that's what they were using. That's the first program I learned, and I've, I've just stayed with it. I've been kind of um, uh, threatened with other programs. And I guess I just never, I had a tendency, I just, I was like, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to kind of stick. Uh, I'm not saying Max is the best. Um, but each program has its benefits and negatives and, you know, I mean, it's just, um, so if you, and as a freelance artist, all I'm really concerning with when I turn into projects is my OBJ, which is a, a Maya format, um, to just make sure that an animator can use it or FBX, which is uh, again, more towards the, um, low poly side. I'm going to kind of throw in pen to sphere really quickly. And again, this sphere is really large. So, um, let it save. I can come down here and I can try the, uh, where are you at? Unify again? Nope, still doesn't like it. So I'm just gonna shrink this down. And I'm gonna grab my move tool. Okay. And the place. I'm just gonna get an eyeball in here. And I'm just using, I'm using the move, and I'm just pulling towards me to kind of pull it in space. Subtool master mirror append is one x. So now I have my eyeballs. Usually, if um, uh, when I throw in eyes, you can always just quickly give it some kind of uh, quick material hit. So I'm just going to go material. I'm going to say fill object, kick back out into my. Um, so as you can see right now, I, I have some eyeballs. So what I'm doing is I'm throwing a different material to kind of give myself an idea of, okay, well, this is the iris. That's what I'm building around, so pay attention. So um, so just have some, you know, use some of it. But a lot of times the reason I'm keeping most of the color the same is because it's all one skin. I'm having different controls of trying to, to blend, and I want to be able to see it. So now I'm going to start defining now that that's there. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go up a higher level a little bit, and I'm going to start defining my certain areas again concentrating on the eye section because that is going to help me tell what the creature is going to be like eyes are very important to development of a creature or a character or however you want to do it, it um, so i'm going to give him some crow's feet i'm just sweeping around and not really concerning myself, like, is every single line perfect? No, I, it's never going to be. So don't worry yourself with it. And you can always erase and build back up. So I'm holding down shift and I'm wiping away as I'm building and, you know, just have some fun. Um, 
yeah, honestly, it's, uh, side effects. Uh, I just watch really. I don't watch the best TV shows, but I have it. Uh, like where I'm looking and reading, you guys. That's always got something on right there, and and I just kind of, I'm just relaxing and sculpting away, and and um, and if I ever get to a point where I have to like, oh, I, I've got to really think, then yeah, I'll pause. I'll pause the TV show and I'll, I'll kind of concentrate on something and and uh, especially if something's not working, I'll be like, okay, what the hell's happening? And then I gotta figure it out. Um, so sometimes I do have to shut down. That's rare though. A lot of this stuff is is old, not old hat, but it's like it's uh, it, the reason when I usually teach, I try to get the tech out of the way because it's rinse and repeat. It's gonna be the same thing, and and you know have a few things where you have to kind of you know, something's going to hit you, you're going to figure it out. But once you get that tech out of the way, it should just be a habit. You just kind of, this is the process I have to do, and, you know, then I have to do this step and this step. And um, So this is, I guess, the tough part, finding something that you really like and you're happy with. So okay, I'm going to kind of start separating out the jawline. So maybe kind of to where I want it um, it's a little bit sharp flat I'm going to build up a flesh here and then let me define where this is going to so again just like I did up here I'm going to have some of the flesh kind of um, come around because I want to have it over top and kind of weighted. So I'm going to use my in-flat brush to kind of intersect, almost kind of like the, the skin has fell, uh, fallen, excuse my language, uh, and then interact. So it's almost kind of like his age. Just like if you ever take a look at um, older people, they have like their ears just start to droop, gravity just starts to hit. So you want to kind of find those areas of story in your character. Um, uh, I don't have a personal um, Twitch. I need to kind of do one pretty soon. I'm slowly kind of building this up. The, the I'm still learning the whole streaming kind of thing, interacting. I always just used to do Skype or just kind of hanging, and um, so I'm building that up. So, and and I'll get to polypaint here pretty soon, and then I'll break it down. Um, so, but yeah, ZBrush Live. The reason I started doing it because I have a lot of friends on it, and you know, I, I love those guys, so I try to help them out and this was one thing where I was like oh I could kill two birds with one stone I need to really start practicing more of my poly painting because I usually just sculpt and I stopped um, and then of course to, to sculpt along with a lot of the fabulous people that are demoing and doing the stuff for ZBrush Live this stuff is you guys having the opportunity to kind of check this out this is free which is phenomenal because back when um, when I started out I actually first job I got into a red storm whatever on the game side I actually had to pay somebody for like a month free lunches for him to teach me so uh, that's kind of why I teach because it kind of pissed me off to be quite honest it was kind of a dick move because uh, I was on there I was on their team and stuff like that but um, nobody would show nobody would show me anything it was very it was very weird so because I had just come from Disney where everybody was very um, they shared uh, I, I don't know what it was, but um, and I wasn't there long enough to be a dick to anybody. Just let you guys know. <laughs> so, not saying that didn't happen later, but still, in the beginning, I, I, even if I don't like somebody, I've always believed in helping because uh, the weakest person on the team is you know as strong as you will ever be. So I always believe in helping and sharing knowledge. So and that's why I try to teach. Is, you know, do my best to, to teach what I know and hopefully not be wrong in it. So, but no guarantees I might be, guys. So, let me. I'm kind of like pulling a lot of, of. If you take a look at the front, I'm kind of bringing everything down. I'm trying to, again, keep your eye moving across the creature. So, I'm trying to take a look. Um, it kind of. I have this sharp angle. I think I might want to blend in a little bit more of the bone, so it kind of defines, sweeps back. So, and I have a lot of this purse aspect, um, but I want to have some flat areas of where there's not too much detail. If I have a lot of information going right around here, I need to have a little bit of rest for the eye. 
to pick back up. So my rest areas could be this little section right here and maybe up here, this whole section here, if I'm gonna define out um, a little bit more detail to the bone. You wanna make sure that it's not busy everywhere, which I've seen a lot of people do. Uh, they just put detail for detail's sake. This is why I kind of show this technique where I'm not building up into the high level of details right off because I'm trying to build those base forms. You start simple, form is key, and then you do the secondary and then you build the tertiary details at the end. Try not to get ahead of yourself because a lot of people just do tertiary. There's tons of details and call it done. And then your eye gets nauseous by looking at it. So, um... Infinite, what was the subtool of pen mirror step? Uh, oh, uh, what I, all I did is in the eye. So whatever you have, you're just gonna go up to Z plugin, subtool master, and then you could just mirror. Um, and what that does, whatever object you have on one side, will just mirror. There's other plugins you can actually use as well. I just have a tendency to keep pulling back for it. So yes, you, well, you can use uh, transpose master to actually also you kind of, you know, move your, character around, but not rigging in the sense that you're thinking like Maya. ZBrush is a must-have, in my opinion. Um, learning it now, I mean, if you're going to be animating, like you're just an animator, it's, it's a little bit less um, necessary uh, because you're, you know, you can't animate within ZBrush um, the way that you can in Maya. So some packages will be, you know, the ones you want to stick to. But ZBrush is, I don't know. And they don't pay me anything to say this guy. So, you know, it has to be true. I love the program. I touch it every single day. Um, and this is actually what separated me from a lot of people. Uh, when I was pushing and pulling verts in space, I, I wasn't a very good artist. I had trouble. I was very slow and tedious and very frustrating. And when ZBrush and Mudbox, well, Mudbox came first pretty much. I heard Mudbox first. I was using it and then ZBrush um, came out. I went and, uh, to my local community college that was in town where Paul Gabriel, a good friend of mine, um, now I showed up, listened to him, and I was hooked on ZBrush and I got into the betas and, uh, and all of a sudden I was like, boom. I was able to go back to all my traditional ability, um, sculpt and not like, oh, God, I got to move this vert over here to make this and do, like, it was some freaking crossword puzzle to create a creature. Not very fun. So, um, so I love ZBrush for the fact that it just made me have fun as an artist again, because, you know, that's why when I get into low poly and a couple other stuff, I start to kind of, like, push and uh, pull in those vertices. I really did not like it <laughs> as much. It's a tedious. It's something I'm good at. I can do it now. I've been at this game for about 20 years. Uh, it's Still, you ask me, do I want to? What do I want to do today? Low poly will never be the answer. Okay, I have a little bit of floaters here, and that's just kind of, you know, as you can see right there, that's the jaw. Um, again, this is broken up, so if I want to get rid of that jaw, I could take that out. So if you, if I turn that off, if you notice the jaw is not in there, if I hold down Control, click, you could actually see the jaw come back in. I have it just peeking there and there, um, but. Control Z, uh, Control Shift. I'm sorry, and then the poly group. I'm just hiding and separating the poly groups. Okay. Um, also, if you have something hidden within the layer, I, I if like if I want to divide this again, you have to unhide and then you know right there, it's it's going to balk at you. So I'm going to bring that back out, and then I can go up to the higher level and then divide on that. So in case I just want to bring that back in. Okay. Sorry. Um, sorry guys, I'm, I'm trying to, trying to pay attention. I'm missing some stuff because I'm still trying to figure this guy out, but I'm, I'm getting close. So whatever I have on the top that I'm blending together, like if it, if it's, if, let's say that this is kind of like a headdress or it's kind of, you know, maybe, um, he's going to have different sections. Like I'm wearing a hat, you know what I mean? Like maybe this might be kind of the hat. So if I'm thinking of the flesh separation, maybe this might be coming down to where um, it comes over and it's kind of like, this might be some, almost some, um, what do you want to call this? Turkeys that have the um, gobble thing or whatever, right? So I can, I can make this as just where, again, detailing his age you know, the, the the older this guy gets, you know, maybe he's got, you know, one big ass 
gobble thing that comes down. You know, who knows? Again, this is this is the BS or the story that you kind of add to your character, kind of like you know, what if, um, you know, and then you can kind of go from there. So I'm gonna treat this as this is sort of like he's old, it's coming down, and then this is now um, leading your eye up and around. I'm gonna add some, maybe not quite. Sharp. But again, I'm using this to kind of, again, this is, I want to be solid. I don't want to definitely do penis head kind of stuff, so I've got to be careful about that. So I'm going to probably take off this line. And again, that's why I was like saying it's kind of phallic. Anytime that you kind of do like a big head. Um, granted, most, I have a lot of phallic stuff in my work. I <laughs> don't mean to, but. Um, Kind of like droop. I took out the ears, so let me kind of define. Okay, and I think I got a package coming, so excuse the dogs here in a second. <coughs> okay, all right. I think I like that. This can, uh, again, I'm gonna um, say if I brought this guy down, kind of like that is his crown or crest of age, then I'm going to probably use this flesh to separate a little bit. And maybe I'm going to kind of do it as a, um, you know, he'll have some bumps or instead of like, you know, you have the chin and it's grizzly like I, you know, have this beard or whatever, maybe I'll do a little bit more detail to where that kind of comes up to divine, divide that separation of line. And let's figure out more of this. Okay, and I'm going to make his brow section here. Okay, pretty happy with the design. Um, now I'm going to stop where I'm at because I'm going to kind of just define really quickly, do my alphas, and I'm going to kick in a poly paint and stuff like that. So. Yeah, side effects, right. The, the, use this free information, ask questions. Like I said, I never, never had the chance to interact with, you know, professionals and, and stuff. And if you have the question, it's phenomenal. Um, that's why be polite as well too, because uh, I will, uh, I will take you young whippersnappers to task if you show. And there's a lot of rude people that, uh, when they get free stuff, they kind of act like they're due. Um, but more than happy to share as long as you're polite <laughs> and you appreciate it. I remember uh, I was doing a demo and this one girl came up and asked me a question and then and then she said, well, the other six people didn't, you know, they said something different. I was like, of course, everybody's going to say something different. Try to find somebody that you actually can understand and appreciate. Um, it's, it's, art is not, there's one way to do it. It's, there's only one way to ever do art. That's not, that's not right. And there's so many ways to do art, so many different directions, so many different inspirations that you can build from and come from that you need to just kind of find the one person that speaks to you or art. Like, you know, some people like, you know, realism. That's what I do. Some people like, you know, um, anything else, whatever. <laughs> just too many art forms and stuff to went blink there for a second. But based on that background of what somebody likes or what they're inspired by, then that's, you know, that's the beauty about art. There's just so much of it, so many different directions. And so many things that can inspire. That's the great thing. So just find the right person that talks to you. All right, I'm going off on a tangent. Sorry, guys. Okay. Um, you're welcome, side effects. Hey, Julie, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. How's it going, A-Cubed? Thanks for showing up again. A-Cubed, uh, Ashley's uh, another ZBrush Live uh, phenomenal artist. You should check her out. I keep meaning to, to stop by more of um, all the... There's so many good ZBrush artists that we do the ZBrush Live, it's hard to keep up and watch all the streams because then I don't get any work done. So I'm going to, um, again, pop up, unhide, and I'm going to def define this again. Now, this is pretty messy. I took that skull and I kind of pushed. So again, if I remember, this is what I came from. As you can see, it kind of starting to get nasty. Um, and with the poly frames on, you can actually see what part of that skull is kind of kicking through. There's that little bottom of the jaw. 
Um, I could actually uh, also do this, guys, where if you go solo, let's say I'm going to go for the polyframe, you can actually mask different sections. Um, so you can actually, if you if I wanted to pull and get pretty close to another poly group that's underneath, or just hold down control and let's say if I want to see if uh, maybe moving this jaw out, you know, to define a little bit. Now I don't necessarily need to, I could easily do that with, um, you know, the, the form on this character right there, I could have just pulled that out, but if I want to create different material hits, maybe I keep this and I can use this to make it a little bit sharper and make it just like a small effect. If I don't want this part right here, let's take care of this. Uh, I'm just going to go down a different level. And if you accidentally pull that, just I'm using smooth. This is the beauty about having the different levels as well. If it's too high, um, then it's going to take you forever. But by going up on the different levels, I have that ability to take care of that pretty quickly. So. Um, Thank you, you will. I you will. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, fake it till you make it. Honestly, like art, seventy percent BS, thirty percent skill. No, I'm just trying to vice versa. But it's like you do have to just kind of keep having fun, playing with it until you're fine with it. So, um, is honestly, I've, I there's so much stuff that um, I do that you will never see uh, because it's crap. You know what I mean? But I'm trying to play and, and figure it out and and. Uh, see what I like. Um, and I'm not worried about if I do something that's bad. That's part of exploration. If I did everything and I thought it was great, I'm doing something wrong because it's all crap. Um, so you have to know what is good and what is bad to make sure you do something good. So, all right. I'm going to go and define this up a little bit more. So I'm going to start creating some of those sharp points. I have this is going to be really soft and again I was trying to do that weighted feel to the skin so I want to sharpen a little bit of these areas um, to really define out the difference and maybe I'll even do some uh, calcium hits to the bone so it's kind of like um, using damn standard nail it's kind of like it, it ate away not too much because again my detail I want to be in the skin I want the bone to be a little bit more of the flat that I was talking about rest for the eye. Okay. And I'm trying to move a little bit faster. I have, I don't have to pick up my little one today so I can take a little bit more time and I wanted to show you the low poly. So, and I definitely want to sharpen up this detail. Save. If I may, how do you quickly mask and delete part of the mesh? So something. Um, so like if 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 I want to mask, by masking you just go down to poly group right here and say group masked, and it's going to separate the poly group, and then you could just hide and say split hidden or just you know um, delete it out um, by say. Sorry. Um, so if like if this is mass, it's a separate polygroup. Uh, so like let's say right now the skull already has it. If so, if you go to um, split, you got group split. You can just totally mask, create a polygroup, group the split, um, split the group, and then just go ahead and delete that layer. That's the quickest way to kind of probably do it. Um, uh, that's I mean there's just there's but the the great thing about ZBrush is there's so many ways to do it. It's not even funny, and that's some of the problem with it as well. There's just so many ways to learn something. Uh, to do it. Um, so just like I was talking about finding the right teacher or finding someone that you kind of speaks to, you got to find the right process. Because I've had plenty of people go, that's not how I do it. You know, why are you doing it that way? It's not how I do it. Well, that's because that's how I do it. <laughs> so to each their own. Um, so find what is working for you and, you know, but always be on the lookout for a different way to learn something. Because uh, if I had, a, if I showed you the way that we used to do it from ZBrush, like you know, what was it, not even 2.5 or whatever when I started, uh, you guys would be freaking the hell out. So uh, they have taken so much time to to make ZBrush what it is today. 
Okay, so I have this brain in the back. I don't necessarily think I need it uh, because if I brought it in again, it's it's another element. Like if I say, oh, he's got, you know, the brain and uh, poking out, I I could do that. I could say that, you know, maybe um, I don't know, he's got some kind of like where you can see the inner brain and it's just popping out. If it's not a visual interest, you're kind of like, oh, why? Um, you know, because if I want to kill this elder, how did he get so old? Because his brain's sticking out, you just shoot him, he's dead. I've been playing Red Dead a lot, um, so that's how you shoot. But, you know, if you're not really worried about the, you know, how did he get this age or whatever, it's just, you're just making it because you want to make it cool or you like it, that's all you need. But looking at it, I'm kind of like, well, if I really like some of the defining area, you know, I don't have to have all the brain, I could just use it as kind of some weird flesh. So I can hide this, or I could just simply smooth it out so it doesn't quite become, hey, this is screaming a brain. Maybe it's just part of the flesh. And I'm using that brain to kind of like, he's got a lot of, you know, it's like, what are those uh, cats that have like all the skin? So it's just tons of skin folds that I can kind of um, match it. So again, I'm, I'm adapting an object that was meant to be this into something that, okay, is now that. So it's part of what you should just, as an artist, kind of think, you know. Um, and that's great when you start building up a library, you know, um, you can... You could really just, uh, sorry, since my dog starts barking, <laughs> I, can't, I can't think. Um, so again, I want to be careful about how phallic I make this. Um, so I'm going to try to blend it just a little bit. So now I'm on the brain section. I'm going to blend that down a little bit. And I'm adding a couple more layers, guys, to kind of use my skin to quickly bunch and then if you want to make anything thicker just again use the in flat brush to kind of add that weight and take whatever things you want okay uh, I am I, I use Dynamesh to kind of start off initially uh, very um, but I you know, I'm not using Sculptors Pro. I haven't used that yet. So, let me see. Yeah, big works. Um, yeah, he probably, right. It's right. He's probably wearing a helmet. You know, that's why he survived. So, there you go. So, Rai just made up some uh, story to kind of help why he survived. Um, but again, it's, it's sort of, this is where, you know, taking that brain, then I can kind of use this to kind of, you know, build up some more of that skin. And then I'm, Connecting so this line right here to maybe just you know, it's part of the skin fold that goes up okay. All right good enough So I'm going to define just a little bit more and then I'm going to go straight into Alphas <laughs> um, Yeah, Sphinx are definitely cool cats. Um, I still intend to do one of those suckers um how did I learn anatomy? Uh, I studied a lot, actually, Arnold. I used to um, go to cadavers, uh, like at a local medical school when I was in Florida, going to Ringling, and then um, they allowed someone to kind of stop on by, and, and while they were studying um, to be doctors and all kind of stuff, I just studied just drawing and looking at books. Michelangelo, Leonardo, all those guys, uh, Raphael, and just tons of drawings. And then life drawing, as much life drawing as I could find, because I, I mean, I, for college you, I needed to have one class to pass, but I would always just um, jump into every single life drawing class that I could. So instead of just you know sitting at home watching TV or whatever, I would just go and um, step into another class. And Disney had lots of life drawing. So this kind of I'm going to take out this little. Or just bury it just a little bit. It doesn't bother me. It was kind of looking hokey. Yeah, and Lens just said it a different way. 
uh, or, you know, just mask part, invert, hide, deal, you know, I mean, there's different ways to do it. Um, just whichever, you know, um, and there's within the modify, where am I? Modify topology, you can just delete hidden as well. So within the mask, like if I, on my sculpt, my skull here, if I just had that jaw hidden, I would just say delete hidden would also knock it out as well. So there's quite a few different ways to, to get rid of something. Uh, poly groups are phenomenal uh, for cleaning up and detailing and separating. And so try to try to you know bring that into your workflow. Okay, so now I'm just going to kind of a couple of the areas where it's masked out, or I'm trying to separate from flesh to bone. I'm just going to kind of add a little bit more detail and. Right now I'm at six million. If I divide it I'm at two million, that's good. Polypaint, I'll see how well it's going to kind of work. And again, I'm going to probably use my in flat brush to add a little bit more weight. Almost like it's sitting. And I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm kind of trying to echo some of the shape, but it doesn't mean I have to do exactly that shape, okay? Because um, I kind of wanted to maybe bring that just a little, okay. Now with bone, remember what I was like saying, some of the calcium deposits that kind of hits. You could also, if I, once I start doing alpha, I can actually go ahead and put some more uh, detail into it, but a lot of times I'm using my trim dynamic to get some of those tough areas, and I just use my clay brush a lot to dig into it to make it look like it's been eroded. And then that's pretty much all you really need for bone. The calcium hits the marrow. So I'm just digging. Going back to the standard, and now, um, if I was going to do a 3D print of this, this little negative hit in there, that'd be very bad. So let's just say I'm going to fill this out just a little bit. Thank you, Deba. Appreciate it, man. It means a lot you guys taking the time to watch. Um, right now, Shofo, um, I have the Cintiq 21 UX, but I just bought the new 22 uh, Cintiq that should be arriving today. There's, they tried delivering it Wednesday, but I was out. So, um, so that should be coming here pretty soon. And that just has, I mean, I'm going to keep my UX, uh, my 21. I actually like the fact that it's not the widescreen, so it depends on um, how well I like the new 22. I might give it to my son if I don't like it, just go back to the old. But I wanted to try it because it uh, has a lot better definition. And, and uh, detail for the, the brush information. So, in flat. Not inflate, yeah, if you look it up. <laughs> whack them. Whack them. Just whack them like the whack-a-mole. I'm from Michigan originally, so we have different uh, different ways to say stuff. Like I say pop. Sorry. Um... Adib, it's, it's whatever you feel comfortable with using. The reason I started doing, uh, you know, I did this, um, the ZBrush Lives this way, showing you guys from ScanHead, is to help you just create, not worry about anatomy, because right now, this is, I'm building off of anatomy, I'm paying attention to certain things, but I'm not really concerned with this is going to be a human and I have to do this. Um, uh, but it's a lot easier to create something pretty quickly and to see if it's working or not that um, that works for you. 
You know what I mean? Just like if I started from a sphere that I'm going to be worried about, what am I creating? How long is it going to take me? Um, and so on. So by doing it this way, starting from a human head, I'm able to sit there and kind of get some quick ideas and then build off of it. Um, so right now I'm going to add a little bit. I'm using alpha as a drag to go up. Right now, as you can see right there, there's some breakdown on here. So I'm going to go ahead and just go one up. I could also just clean this up later, but I'm not going to quite yet. I'm going to probably just give a little bit of these bumps just on the outside of, you know, because I said he's old. I'm holding down Alt to go to the negative, and I'm letting go Alt to do positive or whatever that brush is going to be. And again, depending on which alpha, that is going to vary. So just be aware. I'm just going to try it out, and I'm probably going to do down here. Again, some of this is bone, so I'm not going to do it in every single area, just probably some little areas, not... All over the face because again um, if you look at your own face you have scrubble certain places and some places you don't if you have a scrubble everywhere hair everywhere then then you're in trouble and you're a werewolf and stay away from silver so okay bad joke sorry I'm a dad guys and I'm gonna probably add a little bit more scrub down here and all I'm, I'm using, uh, I think this is Rick Baker's um, alpha, brush alpha of just different skin alphas. You can create your own. You can do a lot of different stuff and, and bring it in. Um, I have different alpha, alphas and skins and brushes, uh, but I'm just, again, just showing you really quickly. So I'm going to import another alpha. Um, like here's a leather, if you look at it, leather the skin 67. So, um, So how can you tell if a creature looks cool or not? Um, and uh, it's 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 based as I was saying before. It's like uh, uh, it's based on you. you. You're the viewer best. Like it, um, you know, I'm I'm thinking this isn't looking too bad, but again, it's I could have I could finish out something and somebody goes, no, that looks like crap. So you're you're always going to have somebody that's going to like it. Your mom, hopefully, um, my mom likes my work, or you're always going to have somebody hate it. So I personally. You know, if somebody says, I don't like it, or somebody says, that shit, okay, great, why? And if they can't come up with anything, then you're like, okay. Don't don't be offended by somebody not liking your work, you know. Um, as long as you like it and you're learning from it, then that's good, you know. Uh, that's Because if I, if I did something and, and, and I, I ended it up and I was like, I didn't learn anything, that's where I, I get concerned. That's why I have a problem. Because uh, I want to make sure that I'm learning something every single time I do it. If Because uh, as an artist, I, I usually don't like what I do. I appreciate the fact that some of you guys enjoy what I do. Um, but um, but I'm, I'm more concerned about, can I get faster? Am I learning something? Or is my clients or people that I'm sending it to, do they like it? Um, I'm more concerned about you guys liking what I do rather than me. Okay, I'm bringing in different alphas. And as you notice, sometimes they're a little bit more intense. So up in here, this is the Z add intensity. So just pay attention, just not, again, every single alpha you bring in is gonna change. Doesn't mean it's gonna be used. Um, sometimes I'll bring it in and go, yeah, I'm just testing it out. I want to see what works. So just cause I was using this alpha stubble doesn't mean that I wanna have that exact same look. Cause I'm slowly within, this is the tertiary detail at the end. I already did my main forms. I did my secondary forms. And now I'm just slowly adding in some extra little detail. And uh, and this is more like if I if I decided to do um, a key shot or I did like a higher renders, this is where this stuff kind of comes into. And it's a subtle detail, um, just like you see on my my beard right here. Even though I'm not growing it very well, uh, you had the cheeks, you had the chin, the the mouth. Um, the pores are more to find up on the nose area. I kind of took away the nose area. Uh, it's still there, so I might put a little bit here. But I don't want to have like stubble everywhere, which I, I usually see. You know, this is where I was talking about people just put detail for detail's sake. Um, so you've got to have a rhyme and a reason for it. So even though I had that more stubble, I might bring this up just a little bit more and call it done. Or use this to blend down just a little bit more in the neck. And this is, this is I could tell it's breaking, it's starting to break up. I got a lot of pushing and pulling down there. So I'm not going to put too much. 
but you know just have fun that's why I keep saying just have fun um yeah Samus uh, I would ex I love Cintiqs uh, where you're actually working on the monitor I have my own Wacom tablets whatever I, I feel disconnected I actually like it to where I'm um, on the screen and um, to be quite honest I mean that's uh, in the beginning it was pretty difficult like my hand was getting in the way but I actually um, model um, I paint draw model sculpt all with my Wacom pen so on my Wacom so it took me a little bit because my hand was kind of in the way in the beginning when I was sculpting, but uh, but I love it now. Okay, I'm not doing a lot of different um, stubbles. I'm pretty much done. I'm going to probably just do some... I'm going to go back to that um, alpha elephant skin. Um, so let me go to... And again, if you notice, every, I, I pretty much am pulling the same alphas because I'm trying to show you it's not the alpha. Or it's not the certain brush that's going to make your character. Every single, you can use the same brushes, you can use the same alphas, and you create entirely different things because it's based on the direction you go or what you're using uh, in your mind. So um, just because I keep using the same thing, they, they look different. So, um, or I hope they look different. So I'm going to go here to the brain. I'm going to start bringing in just maybe a little bit of, of this color, uh, you know, on the edges here. But I'm going to bring this down a little bit because... And okay, I'm going to add some quick skin detail to this object. Because remember, this is pretty flat. I don't want to do overly heavy detail because this is, again, some more of my relaxed area for the eye. Um, and if I want to tie it in, I can actually just kind of bring it down to the neckline and blend it in. And what I'm doing here by taking those two alphas and crossing over those two different pieces is I'm bringing consistency to the character <coughs> to make it look like it's unified. Okay? Because if I just had all this detail up here and I didn't have any detail down on that other object, then it would look disjointed. Two different things. So, um, yes, Rommel. Hey, what's up, Rommel? Check out Rommel's works. Phenomenal. Yes, Rommel's. My mom was pretty harsh on me, to be quite honest. Sylvan, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Nadeeb, thanks, man. Just keep showing up. Um, why does material affect my whole sculpt instead of just a selected subtool? Does anyone know? Are you talking where you have a different material on a specific object like a, and it's stuck? Is that what you're talking about? If you ever get, like, let's say I accidentally have this material on this object. Like if you say... Um, your material modes on there and I just say color fill object now if you notice when I switch you can tell what sub object I was on so you're like saying hey I, I've, I've got this on this object how do I get this off um, like yeah okay on the eyes so I had my material the material objects is on or if I had M, MR, okay, M is material so it's whatever the material object you have RGB is the color poly paint information M RGB is the mixture of the two so if you ever want to just wipe off just the material just make sure you're on the m because if you have the m rgb on or rgb you're going to wipe out whatever poly paint on the, the thing i'm going to be right here you're going to select your material go down to this one called flat color and so what that does is you can actually see it. it's, it's the absence of any kind of material hit whatsoever and you're going to make sure you want to have the rgb on intensity 100 material just go color fill object it'll be gone okay and then just make sure that material's off of it because you can actually when you're sculpting, I could have had material on the sucker the whole time. If I want to sit there and have a color where I am wiping that, if you see right there, it's hitting the sculpt Z addition with the color at the same time. But again, I'm trying to separate. I I personally, and this is not how it, you know, anybody can work however they want. I personally like to do my sculpting first, concentrate on my sculpt and my forms, and then do my color secondary. Because again, Sculpt is going to define my direction. Color is going to actually can change that whole look again. It's they're they're two different bastards to be quite honest. So um, trying to handle them both at the same time gets kind of um, you know it's trying to ride a, it's like riding a bull and trying to drink a beer at the same time. Concentrate on them separately or else you're going to die. So I know I have never ridden a bull, so but I, I'm assuming it will be pretty difficult. So I'm going to kind of bring in a little bit 
some of that detail, but I'm, actually I'm going to kind of undo that. I want to bring in some of this, but I want to kind of start resting the eye a little bit. So I'm going to slightly blend. And by doing that, I'm just kind of slowly just reducing this. And uh, by the intensity to where it's subtly there. And swipe in a little bit. So let's go down towards almost non-existent. So you can actually see it. That's not quite that. And I'm going to oops. let me go out my standard, turn off my alphas really quickly because I'm gonna use it to I need to change my intensity. I need to define this a little bit. It looks kind of weird. I was trying to blend it, but maybe I'm just not going to blend it. I'm going to kind of just have it to where it's built up a little bit on skin forms. Okay. All right. Let's go back to alphas. And let's go ahead and I'm going to pick one more. I'm going to do that elephant I was talking about. Let's just do this one, and I'll use that to blend. This is pretty, again, each different alpha I'll bring in, change the intensity, and I'm just going to define this up. And as you see, by using these two different alphas, it's just going to blend uh, because I made them kind of reduced. But I'm just trying to give some skin variation. And down here, it's kind of, as you see, it's really broken up. I'm at 2 million right there. It's probably as much as I want to do. And I'm going to... And you can swipe a couple times, a couple different directions if you just want the more skin to have a little bit more noise. I'm going to go to here and I'm going to use that same alpha. And right now I'm at 2 million, uh, 200, so I'm going to go up one more level. And I'm going to try to use that to blend. With that, let's go ahead and go back to that snake alpha. Okay. And then here, I'm on the neck right now, guys. So I'm, I'm jumping around. And I'm using that skin alpha to kind of direct your eye in the direction. Okay. And let's go ahead and blend. Okay. Let's go to polypaint. Okay, now that I'm polypainting, uh, I want to kind of try to think of, um, again, a base color. I'm gonna keep with my polypaint um, and swiping here. I'm not gonna use that alpha. I'm gonna probably go to my, I, I usually like to have some kind of alpha that breaks up the skin variation just a little bit. Um, alpha 31 is fairly good. You, you can use a depending on how you want it to blend. But what you want to do is you want to have some break up on the color. And I'm going to switch over from, well, first of all, before I do, I'm going to save this one. And then I'm going to make a, and a lot of times I like to save in increments as well. So uh, yeah, the Cintiq, sorry. Um, so folks, sorry about this. Cintiq 21 is a very, it's an older of their models. They have the 24 inch and a couple other ones, and but that, that's just getting huge and you don't need that much. Um, uh, and uh, and I just kind of like, I grabbed, uh, if you do, do a quick Google search for like Rick Baker's alphas, he put them on a long time ago. ZBrush has uh, on their Pixel Logic, they have a lot of great alphas you can kind of share. They're all over the place. I mean, it's not, I, I didn't create any of the alphas. I just kind of borrowed or took from other things that I had. Um, some people do sell some of the sets that you can actually purchase if you find them. But again, um, I just did some Google searches for elephant skins and rhino skins and a couple of ones to uh, to do it. So, um, okay, I'm on a few different levels. This one's the highest level right now. So I'm going to kind of pick a color. So what I want to kind of do is probably think of certain colors I've done. Um, you can actually just take um, the, I like to go to a material called Zebro. Um, Illustrate paint. It actually is a color that kind of gives a little bit of a blue hue to it, kind of like a rim light, which actually just kind of adds a little depth. 
Um, but as you can notice right there, every single material is going to change. So if I put on a green color, this green is going to be a different type of green based on the material that I'm painting onto. Um, the reason I like to do the zebra is because when you start bringing in a different material, it's going to affect the color. So it's sort of like, um, you know, uh, yellow and green make blue. Well, how much of the, you know, the yellow from the material is coming through that's going to make your character look blue, but as soon as you switch into the material, he's not blue at all. So you try to find something that's a little bit more um, base, um, and it comes with a skin shade. Uh, this is uh, skin shade four um, that you can actually use as well. Uh, but I personally like to have a little bit of that skin shade with a little bit of blue rim, as you can see right there on that base. Once I have that, I'm going to kind of try to find uh, color because he is alien. I'm going to probably, of course, I want to build off of um, dark. I always build dark to light. So I'm going to try to find something that is has some of the color into it. I am going to kind of probably bring him a little bit more towards um, like a creepy gray green. Um, I, I you know I don't want to go to the straight. Hey, he's he's an alien, so he's pure green. I want to bring it um, in a little bit of uh, cools as well, and I want to go dark because I'm going to be building darks to lights. Okay, uh, lights to dark. Uh, yeah, no, start dark. And build up and, and build up levels. So, um, so I'm mean, so, sorry, guys. I'm kind of not on the ball today. Um, once I do that, I want to go to RGB. I'm not going to be intermixing the material into it because if I did that, then the material is stuck and I have to wipe it out. I, if I decide to change any kind of material, I'm just looking for my RGB, and I can actually change it as soon as I have that on there. So I'm just going to say fill object. Okay, so it's 100%. I'm going to pick whatever object that I have. Um, that is going to be the skin. So right now I don't have this as um, anything, uh, but let's say I want to change this and I want to have it separate, okay? I'm going to go ahead and this time I'm going to go find a material. I have a material called AL4, which is a very bone aspect. And I'm going to go to um, material. Now, if I want to add color to it, so if I say fill the object with that and I come back out, as you can notice right there, that is what he looks like right there. Okay, that's the bone. So it's adding the material effects on it. And if I take off that material, it's just going to be plain white. If I want to sit there and add some color to it, I can now do that by turning um, this on. I'm going to turn off my Z add. And I'm going to bring this down, RGB down a little bit. So let's say I want to bring in, I can pick colors. See, if I, if I hit C and I'm picking the colors, if you notice on that, it's just pure white. Okay, that's because there's no colors onto it. So let's add like a little bit more browns to it, a material. So now when I start adding, so let's say I want to darken up certain areas like um, tinge the bottoms or the tips of where it's going to hit. Okay, now it's bringing color into it, okay, along with the mixture of that material. So I'm just doing this quickly to darken and define a few things. And then I'm going to quickly move that back. I don't want that part of the design. So if you, you see right there, you can actually see some of that skull coming through. Okay. All right. And so like, let's say I want to have a little bit of shadow or, or skin color variation. So I'm going to darken around where it contacts the skin. And I'm always kind of... Um, shadowing in this detail. All right. So that's good enough to kind of de define. Now let's say um, I'm clicking on the eyes. So let's say I want to change those eyes to something. Um, I'm going to go back to my material. I'm going to make this 100%. So instead of having um, glassed over um, eyes, I'm going to just go ahead and do probably a toy plastic. I'm going to say um, color and then fill that object with that, okay? So what this does is it gives me the materials of that. Um, so now I'm gonna paint. So I'm gonna turn on my symmetry because I turned it off. And so let's give it a little bit more. Let's turn off this alpha, do this alpha. So all I did is this one alpha right here, you see the white, I'm actually using that to give some color to around the eye, the shadow, do you see it? 
and I'm just going out just to blend, and the actually black is going to be where the alpha is not there. That's a quick way to kind of give a little shadowing around it. But if I want to sit there and then go to my freehand painting to kind of like, let's say if I want to define... Okay, so maybe he's got, he's got some kind of weird eyes section here. You can move them however you want. And... And I'm building slowly. And you could also use the the shift to actually blend colors, but make sure the addition is off. Okay. And again, the intensity is going to be pretty high. You can actually blend it, but I'm I'm just tapping really quickly to blend those colors together. And then I'm going back to my material, and I'm going to. Let's see. Dot. And I'm going to give like a little fake. Okay. So it's kind of a little bow eye. <laughs> so we're just trying this really quickly. And if I want to pick that color that I actually initially did, I can actually come in here, change my intensity down to like, let's say if I want to to add a little bit more of a shadow. So right now I'm, I'm painting in some of those details of like, you know, some depth. I'm, I'm adding fake animated occlusion from the eye just because it, you know, you don't, you don't have to have the material have everything else or if I want to add a little bit more color to this little section or even have like a little bit of red. So there you go, those are eyes. Um, kind of bowed. If I don't really like the way they look, I could actually just use my move tool to kind of move them around. You know what I mean? Once I painted that on, to change if I absolutely need to, or just repaint them really quickly. It's very quick. Okay, so let's get back to the material. So I've got those two kind of figured out. And as you notice, that toy plastic has a little bit of that little highlight um, into the eye. And... Um, Oh, I'm sorry, Zofo. The uh, new Cintiq I'm going to get is a 22UD um, non-touch. I heard the touch ones were kind of a pain in the butt, so I'm staying away from it. So we'll try it because it's actually the U, the Cintiq 21 is about 12 inches, 12.8 inches high in the screen. So my hand is kind of going up pretty high. Um, and uh, But the new one actually has it to where it's 10 inches. So I'm losing three inches almost um, at the top. So I'm going to be kind of curious to see how it's going to work. Um, but yeah, the twenty, the twenty-two is the older model of of. Um, they've done quite a few variations since then. Okay, so now that I'm here, I'm gonna turn off my Z add. I'm gonna go to actually that was my move. I'm gonna turn that on. Go back to my standard and grab my alpha again, and I'm gonna start building up. I'm gonna pick this color. From uh, I'm on the face right now, guys, and so I'm going to kind of probably go a little bit more towards the blue and up over. And let's just start building. Make sure I'm on this layer. The dark should be there. So you can see right there that that's how that layer looks. And I'm going to start building up some of my RGB. Okay. Feels like I have Okay, there you go. Really? I guess I'm not picking a high enough color. Let's go down a little bit um I'm going to start just a little bit lower in color to fill the object. Okay. And I'm not filling with 100%. I'm just kind of giving a little bit the start. That way I can kind of see my. Oh. Oops. Sorry, I got lost in that, guys, for a second. So I'm going to start building up some of my highlights. And again, I'm going to pick areas where light's going to hit slowly. Let's bring down the intensity a little bit. Uh, and the areas that I want to define. So like on the lip where I'm trying to rest and the chin. 
I'm going to say the lips usually are a little bit darker. If you notice on the face, uh, your lips are usually red or dark. So I'm going to be very aware. I'm going to use the anatomy from humans or like the direction. So cheeks are a little bit warmer, that kind of stuff, to kind of pull in some of that added realism or feel to the character. Highlights on here. Define some of the skin. And again, the skin, by just keeping this initial color, not really hitting it, but hitting the front where the, you know, I'm creating like kind of like a fake ambient occlusion of where that's going to be. On the side of the neck. And by using this alpha, it's going to kind of break up my skin variation. So it's not going to be like a direct solid color. It's actually blending very slowly um, the two colors that are on the initial color that I did, the swipe, and actually the one that I'm blending with. So it's kind of doing an effect that allows me to build it up slowly by giving it some interest. Okay. Now before I keep going on this one, I'm, I'm kind of do steps. So again, since this is connected, I'm going to start blending. And this is where I might actually change some color to actually define that out. But I'm going to initially start by blending the two pieces together. So this is the same one. Now, here I have the brain on the back. Before um, I want to have them separate, I might just go back to the original color here, make sure I'm there because I forgot to fill it. So I'm going to go back to color, fill object. Um, that looks like it has a material on it. So let's go back to flat color. Yep, it has a material. That's why it's looking a little bit different. So I'm going to make sure I wipe out that material by doing that. I think I, when I was trying to show um, that material reason, I left it on there. I accidentally grabbed it. So now it's, it's back together. So just because I have um, lost that color, I can still pick up the color by hitting C. To actually go back and then I can just blend the skin together. Now again, if my level isn't as high as the other ones, the detail will not be picking up as much. So you got to make sure that you kind of keep consistent poly counts just because then the poly paint, which is based on vertex count, will actually start to break down. So you need to kind of make sure that you're kind of staying in the same levels. So this one can't be like 100,000 polys and this is 2 million because then this is going to look nicer and just more blocky. So I might have to just go ahead and do a quick divide. Now that jumped up to 3.2 3 2 million, but I think right now it's working okay. But I'll keep an eye on that. Okay, so now that I have that color, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go down just a little bit more. I'm gonna bring in a little bit more blues and I'm gonna go up again. Uh, and go back to here. Thank you, Zofo. I appreciate it. Um, I actually got in as animation, but then it froze. So then I went into uh, marketing, uh, waiting for things to open up, but it never did. And um, then I joined. I went to an E3 and uh, walked around looking at the games going, yeah, I think I, I like games. So I think I'll do this one. And then that's how I got into gaming a long time ago. Not knowing all that was a part of gaming, but... Um, I just thought I would try it. And I actually started as a concept artist, but then slowly realized it was not... There were so many good concept guys that uh, I was like, this is pretty difficult, and I wanted to kind of, I don't know, my way kind of be my own little Pixar. So I was trying to learn it all, and then I got to rigging, and then I said, screw that. <laughs> so that's where I stopped. Not a fan of rigging at all. You could not pay me enough. So that's pretty much what I did. But I still draw every once in a while. It's not, I, I concept more, uh, I do 3D drawing more than I would say. Like I concept and I kit bash and I try to create creatures from that. Um, more than drawing 2D anymore. So all I'm doing is I'm slowly building up that skin. I'm going to start bringing in, as you notice, I'm kind of keeping to some of the same. I'm bringing in a little bit more teal, but I'm not going extreme. And I'm going to probably find like a secondary color um, here in a second to kind of start playing off against 
because I don't want him to just be pure green. Even if he has a, a teal tint to him, I don't want him to be a green teal character. So I want to bring in some warms. I'm going to bring in some probably browns to actually, just like I was doing to the, uh, the crown here, um, bring in some dark edges to it. That helps. And what I'm doing now is just making sure that I'm consistent, bringing that skin to it. It will look as close as possible, but, you know, because I said I don't want this to be brain, even though um, good idea of having the helmet on there. It, uh, I think I just want to make it look like it's a whole bunch of skin folds more than anything. Okay. Uh, Zofo, I, I use Max. So um, for um, gaming, uh, I would do pretty much what I'm doing right now. I, I do the high poly. And I'm going to try to show you guys really quickly. Sorry, my nose is a little stuffy. Um, and then I'll probably just do a quick Z brush low. I'm going to dynamesh this really quickly, do a quick low poly crappy one just to kind of show you the process. And I might touch into uh, Substance Painter real quickly just to show you the two together. Now, what I'm doing is I'm holding down Alt, and if you notice, Alt is gonna just kind of switch. Alt is switching from this color to this color, so I'm bringing in black a little bit. So let's say if I wanna knock down some of that nose, I'm just holding down Alt. So this is a secondary color. So if I bring that color there, and I have this, and then I'll have that one. So Alt allows me to kind of like, also quickly, if I wanna just kind of bring in some color in that one, that's how you quickly do it. Or you could just, you know, keep with that one color so okay so I'm gonna go back to here I'm gonna go pretty high to give me this color and I'm gonna go to a, a little bit more extreme alpha so I want to start blocking up. You kind of notice I want to, and I want to add some of this extra skin feel to them. So I'm using this alpha to kind of break up, you know, like that. So it's kind of giving me a little bit more um, subtle hits. And again, he's alien, so I'm kind of adding a little bit different alphas in here just to to give myself like a little bit of um, an odd look to him. But as you can see, just because I'm, I'm painting in color along with alphas to give skin variations and details, so don't just, um, don't just do one. You can do two at the same time. Because I'm still poly painting. I'm, I'm in color. I'm just adding, like I'm not sculpting, like I was saying. Jax! He's out of my spray bottle range, otherwise I would get it, guys. Jax, that's enough. And I'm using my... I'm using my uh, smooth to actually knock that back a little bit. <laughs> yes, I've, sh I've seen, Ashley, I've seen your thing. <laughs> so, dogs are fun. I got three of them. The other two are doing pretty good. So, um, Jax, that's enough. Okay, one second, guys. I've got to sign for time real quick. Sorry about that, guys. That was my Cintiq. So, is Ruby still here? 
So. At least both of them showed up. I actually got something else from Amazon, some batteries. They hit them at the same time, which was awesome. All right. Is everybody still here? <laughs> All right, Jax is over. Yeah, he's, he's a crazy little dog. When we first got to the area, we were walking, and um, there was a lot of... We're kind of like near a lot of nature, and so the... There was like a lot of these high weeds and the wife says, what's in there? And so Jax, when she says that, Jax kind of jumps at it. And so he jumps into the, the high weeds and the next thing I know, he's throw, he throws up this big rat almost the same size as him and just one, two, and it was gone. So, what's up, girl? Okay. So, it was pretty, it was pretty funny because he's a miniature pincher, so he's got a lot of killer <laughs> instincts in him. So I'm just adding a lot of this skin variation and the detail across just to kind of break it up. Uh, I might pull this back just a little bit or I might mix it with something because he's kind of looking like a watermelon, uh, which is not my intent. So you can go back over that alpha and kind of blend down and just kind of break it up a little bit because I want to have some of that little brain feel to him, but maybe not so much where he's all over the place. So. And then let's, again, let's go and make sure that we are bringing that in there as well. And I'm not worried about the asymmetry quite yet. I could add that towards the end. Okay. And I'm going back over the skin. So again, I'm trying to blend those three all together. So now let me go back to here and, and um, I'm going to... take the color there and I'm going to blend. I'm probably going to go to a little bit more towards a dark flesh and all kind of stuff. So he's going to, he's, he's upset. Jax is over there whining about it. So I'm just going to knock this back just a little. Jax! And I've got the green in it, so let's hold, let's hold on. Okay, that's the A. So I was bringing in green, I meant to bring in red, so I was like, why is that not? So I'm using that alpha to blend, bring in some variation that's going to blend in with that skin. Oh, one sec, I know why he's wanting. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I threw him on the stairs with a baby gate. And the baby gate's for my older dog who likes to follow and watch movies with us. And, uh, and But she's getting too old. She can't make it up the stairs. So I, I bought a baby gate. And I forgot I threw him up in there. So he was he was in jail. He didn't, he didn't like that. <laughs> so that's why. I don't know if you guys could hear it. He was constantly whining. So. Ah. Sorry for the problems, guys. Fun times. And if anybody wants a pet, just let me know. Go ahead and just drop me a line. So I'm going to knock this back here a little to kind of inset. By adding that color variation, I'm kind of like trying to have it set within the jawline here, right? So I, I can, the flesh is going to be over top of it. So I want to kind of make sure I do that. And I'm just going to add some depth to the back here. Actually, show. Them. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a fun dog. My dog's the uh, older older husky shepherd, and then my son's dog is the little pomeranian, and the wife's is the one that's causing me a lot of pain right now. So I'm going to kind of just bring in some of that red now that I brought into here because again I'm going to blend. And I'm going to quickly just start trying to catch up. So I'm just going to kind of... So I'm going back to the initial... I'm kind of going back into some of my darks, which I usually don't do. But I'm going to try to bring in some of the color that I was losing. Because he's feeling, like I said, a little bit too watermelon. 
But I gotta be careful about kind of bringing in too much red because then, of course, watermelon's green and red, so it's gonna look kind of funny. So I'm gonna probably have to bring in like a third color here, maybe towards the browns that are uh, onto this guy. Um, but I think before I do the third color, I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna I'm gonna go to my highest highlights first after I kind of set some of these, th these things in. Now, I did say that this is going to be kind of like um, like his, uh, I don't know, crown, think of it, in kind of a way. So I'm going to probably emphasize that here in a second. So as you can see, by having those two colors, I mean, it doesn't take much, to be quite honest, to really start adding some depth to this. It's really windy out. So don't go, don't think that you have to have tons of colors to kind of, you know, this is, this is where I really like this technique because you can slowly blend and you can build up and see so it's not, you know, so extreme right off the bat. Okay, and I'm going to add in some, since this is kind of like his outer nose and then his nose, I'm going to probably make this a little bit more red to kind of blend that back so it's kind of like a layer upon a layer now um, you can turn this off and you can go to no alpha or you can keep that alpha like a head and turn this off to draw with it so as I um, so I'm drawing with it you could actually see it, it's kind of automatically building upon layer upon layer layer so it's not giving me the effect that I want so a lot of times I'll just turn off that alpha and then I'm going to just paint Just using the straight, no alpha, doesn't really need any. And just like I'm going to be, like I used for sculpting, just to quickly get some color in there. I'm going to use that red to build up my base from my eyelid section down to my mouth here. And any kind of indentations or skin folds, I mean, this is where I can kind of use it as to, to hit a little bit of um, the inner skin or whatever, or like the aged skin or however you want to do it, where the sweeps weren't really working. So like, let's say if I wanted to have a little bit of red come down here, I'm quickly sweeping that in. Okay. And again, I'm using color to kind of lead your eye up. So I'm kind of like saying, you know, I'm almost kind of like, drawn like a um, you know red arrow like look here okay so once I have that I'm gonna go back to with my, my red and I'm gonna probably use that red to darken this up because this is part of that crown that I was talking about that I'm kind of probably say in the design and let's say I'm gonna probably I'll treat it maybe like they you know maybe good some kind of veins. Now he's definitely looking like a watermelon as soon as I'm doing these spikes. So I think uh, I think I've got to really change some of this feel because it's again it's the alpha texture that is really making it um, look that way. So I'm gonna hold off on that. Hey JJ, how's it going, man? Good to see you. Um, it's been a long time. Yeah, the uh, um. By doing that texturally is going to kind of make it feel like a watermelon. As soon as I wipe that out, then that's going to change that, that look. So that's where I kind of want to be careful about of how much I'm going to uh, add the color or the, the, the detail. So as soon as I go flat, so this now the top of the head, I might bring in that color that I was talking about, like the third color making it kind of the design and come down here to where it kind of emphasize some of this. Um, so but let me finish up before I do that. Let me just add in some more of that red color that I was dealing with. Like around anything, the bone, I'm, I'm kind of adding this color to set it and again, stay consistent with what I was doing in the front. So I added red around here. So wherever the bone connects, I'm going to kind of add that as well.
and then the shadow areas you want to make sure you have color within it so it's never straight black uh, there's always color within a shadow so I'm just adding some reg to the tinges and I'll just do some variation now I can go back and just grab that alpha Oops, that's my highlight and then build upon it which will actually knock back some of that little section of that watermelon look so let me do it here as well and this might just go to more like the dark skin towards the back and the section here and so i'm jumping uh guys i'm hitting uh, alt and i'm just jumping back and forth from the different materials or the different sub tools so in case you're wondering how i'm jumping back and forth that's what i'm doing This is where I might bring in some of that dark. And I'm just doing a quick look of it. I don't know if I'm going to keep this. And do I want a straight line down? I might just blend this in a little bit down here. <laughs> uh, I do not poly paint in layers. I've had a lot of issues with that where it's kind of blown up on me, to be quite honest. So um, I don't anymore. I just, I'm, I'm poly painting. Because the, the, the cool thing about poly paint is I could just quickly just take it off or I can poly paint back over top of it. Or if I really like something I've done in poly paint, then I could just create UVs for it or just, you know. Uh, toss it on the layers because usually a lot of times I'll just make duplicates of something you know what I mean um, that's the that's the beauty about ZBrush is just so many options to kind of like snapshot and morph and you know uh, save your objects save your save your paintings and sculpts all on the fly without having to worry about it but that's that's what I tend to do okay so I'm going to go back to here this is where I'm going to go to my alpha my elephant alpha that I was using and I'm just going to use that to, to blend in the skin because what the what what that is doing is that it's just kind of quickly giving a gradation you can actually if I want to such a um, well, let's see I don't know if you guys can see it you could actually see it blending the, the, you see how the skin's kind of like the darks and lights from the alpha it's kind of blending those two together so all I'm doing is it just just like with those other ones it's just going to slightly reduce and blend at the same time between the two colors because I want to get rid of some of that watermelon feel to it okay all right I'm gonna come down to here And let's go ahead and bring in some of this color. So you're able to see that in the skin a little bit better. That's breaking up. Okay. So now that I have that pretty much laid out, I'm gonna go into the highlights now. I've gotta paint up a little bit more details. And a lot of times what I do is I'll go up pretty high. Um, and then I'm going to start painting in some of where, um, once it stops saving. <laughs> Thanks, Citron. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm trying to bring him away from the watermelon. <laughs> so, it's a fight. It's a fight, guys. Now, I'm going to probably go a little bit more to the teal. Bring in some of that color into that highlight. And I'm going to, actually, let me... Right now I'm kind of, I'd switched that, so 
I was getting the wrong color. It's goofing me up. So I'm just going to paint in a few of these highlights just to define out the character. And just because I didn't sculpt it in there does not mean I can't add it. So remember I added some of those bumps up on here into the character. I could just paint those in. If I Even if I don't have them in, in sculpt, I could actually just pretend they're there. So I can say I want to do you know, a whole bunch of lines like that, however I want to do it. I can do it in poly paint as well. Um, so this is where it's going to start defining those little details that I want to bring forward. By the value hit, is going to bring things to the foreground. And that's pretty much what I'm intending to do. Like things I want you to focus on or things that I want to showcase on the character. Like some of the folds in the face or the direction of like the line here. So I want to detail out those eyes a little bit. There's that subtle little extra eyelid that I don't know if you guys noticed, but I can bring that back out and highlight. Or I can bring some of these little eye folds here. And I can add some directional lines of the, you know, to the face, whatever, for the skin folds and stuff to kind of lead your eyes. And if, if I overdo it, then I can just kind of go ahead and just blend it back out. Okay, I'm just holding down shift, making sure my, my RGB is, uh, Z add is off. And then I can just reduce those. Thanks, Nightbot. I appreciate it. <laughs> yes, Ashley, you're probably right. It's probably somebody's thing. Who knows? I might get paid for this. Um, yeah, it's it's... Whatever you guys, you know, like whenever you're creating, you know, you can take it. it. And what I could do is go, okay, this is my one color, and I could just do a couple of different skins, as they call it, where I'm just doing some variation uh, skins. So you can kind of, um, like that one that I did for Halloween, and I said I'm not going to do an orange, um, typical orange guy, whatever. And then I had a lot of people going, why didn't you make him orange? You should have made him orange. So I could have just easily just created another skin and created a different looking character by doing that. So, um, because color really is powerful. It can really change the direction of what you're intending. Um, hence the reason I had stayed away from it for so long because it was intimidating. I didn't, I'm not really as good as I would like with it. So when you're painting um, and you're trying to figure out some of the different areas, again, I don't want to do too much of this white because then it's going to be kind of, I'm pulling away from it, but I do want to highlight those areas and I can keep going over top of specific, you know, swipes to actually make it a little bit brighter. So I can go really bright here and then, uh, and then, you know, bring in some of that white to the, the color behind it. I don't have to just do the edges. I can actually use this color to blend in as well. So I am highlighting certain skins, uh, details like edges, worn edges and stuff, but I'm going to gently, with my pen pressure, bring in some more white overall to slowly bring some things forward. And so, like let's say for the side of the eye here, I want to bring in a little bit of that and maybe just detail some of the edge of this little lower eyelid that you see. Or highlight some of the fat folds here that I'm, I was kind of losing. And this is where I can go back and forth and kind of create some variation in the skin. I don't have to have an alpha. I can actually, just like I was doing a lot with the sculpt, I could actually just do that with my poly paint as well. Here's some of those little bubble highlights, highlights whatever I was doing on the side of the skin. Or I can actually use some of that color to kind of Make it look like it's a little bit of, you know, some extra detail. Okay, I'm going to bring some of that highlight to the lips area. So once I start getting kind of happy with that and uh, in specific areas, I need to make sure I'm going to start carrying whatever I do here across to the rest. I don't want to go too far because where are we at? It's 3 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to show you guys some low poly stuff really quickly. 
Unless you guys want me to continue the poly paint. I will just continue until somebody says something. <laughs> so I'm bringing in some of skin fold falls and all that kind of stuff by just sweeping back and forth. And I'm going to use my smooth brush to blend out a few of those details. Okay, so now that I'm, I've got some of that detail into here. Yeah, I'll try to I'll I'll try to do that just to show you guys. Cuz it should be pretty quick. Uh, and I'm going to use the power of Z brush to do a breakdown really quickly. Okay. So again, I have um, some of the highlights I'm just going to bring just a little bit. I'm not going to do a lot of defining details into the back because again, most of the my details are in the front, but I'm going to kind of use this highlight to bring some extra skin folds or some of the edges in the areas that would probably have like some wear and tear so think of that uh, like you know the edges and corners so things that would be hit a lot just like in real life things skin has the same issues it'll have the wear and tear so joints are usually worn down before non-joints, etc. So I'm just bringing in some of those little realistic hits, I guess you'd say, that people are used to seeing. So This is looking a little bit less watermelon, which is good. So let's say you have this detail and you don't quite like the green. I could always choose a certain color and do the color fill object to kind of change that temperature. So let's say if I wanted to make them a little bit darker, I could just use that to, to bring in a little bit more of the warmth. Or if I want him to go a little bit more cool into the purples or whatever, you could say color fill that object to make them a little bit more blue. By having those details already painted into your poly paint, you can slowly quick, you know, change them into a different direction. So if I want more of a blue alien fill at a low level over universal uh, to blend those colors together and change the direction. So you're like, okay, he wasn't working with green, I want him to be more blue, or do I need to separate? Uh, now, if I keep going, I'm gonna wipe, it everything, wipe everything out. So um, be, be aware that, you know, but if I wanted to warm this guy up closer to this one, I can I can quickly just go into not my pinks and stuff like that. Hey Christian, welcome in. That's a good distance. Um, I'm not very good at mecha robots, to be quite honest. So um, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind getting better, but I'm just not as good as I was like to. So I'm going to warm them up a little bit. As you notice, I'm keeping some of that green, but I'm bringing the tones together. So once I do that, I'm going to go to, and I tapped it twice. So again, whatever I kept or whatever I did before, I'm just going to do twice unless I want to permanently fill in because I'm trying to keep it consistent. Now, um, how's it going, Dalton? Um, I could also do that. I'm hitting on the skull thing and I'm bringing in some color to tie it in. I'm not, I did two, two hits. I don't really like, I still want to kind of lighten that up. But we'll, by bringing in that color universally to this, it is actually going to help blend because you're actually seeing the blend of the colors. So let me go ahead and just detail out this little section just a little bit more. Um, you know, his turkey, turkey goblet or, or whatever the hell I was going to do with it. So let me just define that a little bit and then I'm going to go ahead and quickly make a low poly. And then I'll uh -oh. 
Sounds like I got another package. I was trying to have everything delivered <laughs> earlier this week, so I want to have it, but damn it, they didn't do their jobs properly and messed up. So they're delivering everything Friday! Okay. Um, Zozo, I don't have a Twitch channel, actually. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm on Twitch. I can't remember what it is. I'll have to take a look at it. Like, I have a Twitch insignia, or whatever my, my name, but I haven't done a channel yet. Um, a lot of people seem interested in checking that or having me do one, so I will probably start creating one here pretty soon and then um, doing it to where, you know, get together and do some more... Um, different programs that people are interested in if they want to see the process of things. So, okay. So let me go ahead and go back to this. I'm going to bring in um, that third color um, because right now I lost a lot of definition. I'm going to pick up probably towards this red that I've been using, but I'm going to probably bring it a little bit more towards the brown. <coughs> Um, I'm on the ZBrush Live. You can find me at bbriley.com and a couple, uh, like I posted at the, every beginning uh, episode that I do, I actually kind of go over where I'm at and who I'm with because I'm also, uh, I have a company with Martin Verhoeven and James Kane. I always say James Kane before Martin, but um, so you can find me there as well. So I'm going to bring in some of this color that I built up on here, maybe increase this intensity. And a little bit darker okay again I just I just undid a couple because I didn't really like it because I want to darken down this underneath skin and blend it a little bit because it's kind of it's a little bit too much and, and by doing this I'm actually going to bring that skull section here out a little bit more so once I did that I'm going to pull back down on the neck and this little area underneath the... So I haven't, I haven't really defined it that much. As you get a little bit closer. Okay. I want to... I want to bring in some of that here. Maybe not as quite as intense, just to tie it in again because I'm um, skipping over a different material. So a lot of times when you're creating creatures, try to you know try to bring in like two or three different material hits along with style. I mean, just like I'm kit bashing and sculpt, try to you know think of different material separation. But if I have skin here, leading your eye across this material hit, you know I'm bringing in a little bit more of that detail and definition to kind of. Let's see, maybe go this direction. Not so much of it, because again, I'm losing... I was using this to have a little bit of rest for your eye. But I want to use this stamp detail to kind of um, give some detail without... Uh, Pushing it, so sorry, lost my train of thought there, guys. So, okay. So on the back of the neck, I definitely want to bring in some of this detail. So I'm gonna go from the middle, pull out, because I just want to kind of like have one centralized thing, and then I definitely want to probably do this for here as well. So all I'm doing is I'm just trying to bury that a little bit. I'm just trying to give a little bit skin folds. And this is where I can kind of have like that dark stripe and then I can start blending this color. Like I said, I was trying to bring in that third color. So I can just use this to kind of come straight up over here. And see how that looks. Well, 
blend some of it together. Okay. Um, this gobble thing right here, I, mean, I need to decide do I really want to emphasize that or just kind of like knock it back. So let's see. You know, do I do I want to sit there and, and say, yeah, you know, um, look here, you know, have some kind of emblem or have some kind of detailing, um, you know, is it kind of some weird flesh thing? Or just kind of keep that color and then take this color and then kind of even go higher with some highlights to it. Um, make it kind of look like it's a tongue type of thing. So I've lost some detail on it. Uh, as you can kind of see, some of the, the ribbing of the poly count is broken down. But I think that's good. But now that I have this so high, I'm going to go back into the eye and I'm just going to kind of bring a little bit of some of that color to help move that around. Probably on the corners here in the section of the eye and maybe on the inside of the nose to where it balances then here on the lip okay so again that one color is kind of blending across I'm trying to do it so um, thank you Zozo uh, don't miss it it is this, uh, there's recordings I have. This is my 12th episode, so you can find me on ZBrush Live. I have a little um, a section you can find me. Ashley A Cubed is also on here, um, does phenomenal work. You can check out, there's, there's so many good ZBrush artists, you just can go through it. So definitely check out the Pixelogic Live ZBrush channel. Um, yeah, you, when you Dynamesh, you can actually keep your. Um, poly counts or poly groups, and even when you decimate, you can even keep your poly paint um, if you want. So, okay. So I'm going to highlight, and I, what I'm doing is I'm bringing down that color just a little bit into the neckline. Kind of like if this is the flesh, again, I'm tying it all in. So I'm just gently highlighting some of this detail onto the bottom neck to separate. I think that's good enough. Let's go into oh here. Let me, now, on, even though I I painted on this one, um, like if I want to highlight this, I need to darken. I'm on the the skull now, guys. So if I want to do any kind of highlights, um, I need to. Knock it back a little bit, so it's not liking that. So if I wanted to, because remember it was really white, so I need to kind of make it a little darker to, so you can actually see what I'm going to do with the um, light. But I do want to add a little bit more depth to this. Fake out some of the shadows. And let's definitely get this. So adding that shadow kind of pushes that in front right there. Then I can go to the high lights and try to kind of, like let's say if I want to edge up That little section, or oh. I accidentally hit cancel. Don't crash. I accidentally hit too high, and so I was up at, uh, I went back in my <laughs> so. Hopefully it didn't crash. Good, good, good. Okay, I'm back to my layers. So don't hit that layer up there. 
Sorry, I'm not doing very good at like reading everything, so I apologize. Yes, I did. I, I, I referenced Ash. Actually, whatever. They, there's, like I said, there's so many good streamers. You should just check it out, see what they do. Everybody has a different technique. Um, you know, and they take their time, so everybody should, you know, it's cool to see what they do. Okay, so I'm just adding some scratches, highlights, whatever, inner, you know, like maybe, again, I told you a story like he's old, so maybe he's been in a little bit of battles or whatever. Um, so the poly paint's going to add some detail to him. And let's say I wanted to separate that a little bit because before it was just one solid piece. So I'm highlighting the separation a little bit. And then I'm really pushing down hard to get a few highlights there. And again, if I want to come back and say I've done too much, then all I do is pick a color, push back a little bit, and he's good. Okay. These eyes feel a little dull to me, so I'm going to just detail them out a little bit more. And the problem is that my poly count was pretty low. I should have. Okay. All right. And now that I have some, I had some amity occlusion just to kind of vary them. Gonna go back into the eye section and just knock that back just a little bit because he feels a little bit. He's not, the eye's not sitting in there in the flesh. It's kind of, I forgot to color that in, so. Okay, so let's call this done. So let me go ahead and do some quick. Quick detailing to this guy. I'm gonna, um, how I would probably go and do this um, and hopefully the stream stays consistent because I'm going to start hitting some uh, some decimation and a couple other things. So I have all the objects um, in here that I want. Like anything that is active, um, you're going to want. Anything that's deactive, I've been goofing around, you can take out. Um, so whatever is here, okay, there's the sculpt. I'm just going to go back to, because right now I'm, I'm just grabbing everything. Um, and I'm going to go Merge Visible. And it's going to take everything. Hopefully everybody can hear. <laughs> yeah, please don't crash. <laughs> Famous last words. It's grabbing everything. Hopefully you guys can hear me. It's going and it's making a duplicate. Okay. So as you see right now, it has, it has all the poly painting. Together it's 17 million polys. Um, it's quite a bit. Um, so I'm going to decimate it and I'm going to see if this can actually do it. I'm going to say um, decimate all, um, pre-process just the current. Now you could say, if you did say decimate all, it would have gone through every single different piece initially, but I would say um, pre-process current. Um, and I'm trying to figure out where is the, you know, keep, use and keep poly paint. Poly paint weight, that's fine. Keep it default. And I'm going to pre-process this thing. Now, hopefully it's you guys can still hear me, it's computing a lot. So can you guys still hear me as it computes? It's analyzing, hopefully. Or I just don't want to solid block and nobody hears me. Yeah. I'll take a drink. Okay, good. Um, depending on how high your, your mesh is, um, will take some time. So I might have to cancel this and just kind of do it. I'm going to try, I'm trying this as a risk, but I want to show you the process. So I've actually sat there for quite a bit and, um, and waited and it's just kind of completely failed. Sometimes you might have to break up the character into a couple different pieces or different sections and break it up individually. I'm hoping this will go out. Okay, there it goes. So what it did is it went through every single sub tool and it actually calculated what it actually needs. 
and so it's taken into account every single vertex pretty much once it finishes its um, yeah once it finishes it then you will actually delete it um, it will reduce it down so the group button does work but it's giving me really bad slicing along the polygroup lines yeah I, I have a tendency to um, right now what I'm doing is I'm just going to decimate I'm going to make a duplicate and I'm going to you know, dynamesh it all together um, and then I'm going to do zebra mesh so what I'm doing right now is I'm actually doing the same process I do to kind of clean up my mesh so let's say if I wanted to take this character even further and detail them out really detailed I would probably separate out the shell the the, the side face but um, but otherwise I want to merge all those different pieces that I kit bash together this is where this process comes in handy as well so that I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a moment once that's done so um, and yeah I haven't mentioned with the union button boolean functions I haven't really played around with that as much I need to I know Mike Pavlovich does a lot of cool videos you can actually break down a look um, so uh, check that out as well it um, you know it's just up to you kind of you can do a Google search the problem is when you do searches on YouTube you can find guys that have no clue what they're doing and they take you down the bad rabbit hole or you can you know so you try to find the, the people that actually know what they're talking about and have gone through the process I have a tendency to look at you know uh, Drust and, and Gabri and you know the guys at Pixelogic or the guys I've seen or I've known if I have a question um, I try to find them it, uh, if you try to find somebody that just, just started yesterday and it's like hey this is how I do it you're probably not going to do very well so be aware Yeah, and it's it's um, as Pdrag kind of said. There's there's quite a, there's different ways to go. If you have trouble and something's not going, try to take a look at it and um, see uh, some different breakdowns of it. So yeah, sorry guys. I was hoping this would be a little bit better. Now this is the problem where you guys get something so high. If I don't need um, some of the detail is high, uh, I can actually go down a layer um, because um, right now. I'm keeping, I went to 6 million for the poly paint more than I did for the sculpting, but I've already kind of gotten, I'm 85% into it, so I'm letting it go. Um, but if it's, the sculpt doesn't need it, don't worry about it, because you could actually transfer your, you know, poly paint details uh, fairly well, because I wasn't doing any really high level detail. Um, once you clean it up, you can transfer your poly paint to a, a, a lower poly count. Um, mesh uh, and it will look better but because i stretched and pulled everything that's where some of the issues were happening that's why i went so high so it's reordering it's almost done and sometimes uh zebras will take a little bit so and this is the section right here the reordering this is where you're kind of like okay is it working i don't know uh, let me go eat some lunch is it working i mean it depends on how big your processor is. I have some pretty good RAM in here, so, um, but again, sometimes it might get stuck in an object. So I'm hoping it will come through here in a second. As, and we'll just look at what Predrag is talking about. Okay, once it hits the writing file to disk, it's coming out of the train. It's like a train coming out of the tunnel. It's almost to the end. So don't mess with it. There it goes. Okay. So once it's there, I've computed it. I've used and kept poly paint. Okay. 20% of decimation. So this is not going to be, um, you know, I'm only reducing 20% of the polys. I'm actually reducing 80. It's the flip of it. Okay. So when I say decimate current, it's going to take it down. And it's going to go 17 million. It's going to bring it down to about one something. Come on. Okay. So I brought it down to 3 million. All right. So you see right there, it kept my poly paint information. If I click over to my zero, I lost some of my material object right here. Um, that's because I computed it just with RGB. Okay. So that was my mistake. Um, but what I could do is I can easily, if I want to add some of my material back to this object, and let me go ahead and tool 
Let me save this sucker just in case. Okay, so I can actually just mask out. Possibly. Let's check it. No. I forgot to dynamesh everything together because I didn't do the poly separate by poly uh, group. Okay, so that's fine. I'm not really worried about that. I could always just come back and color. We just want to figure this out. So I'm going to make a duplicate of this sucker. Okay. Now, because I made this a duplicate, I should still have on that original one, I should be able to go down to like four decimate. Nope, didn't keep it. Okay, didn't keep it. Okay, sometimes you're able to kind of um, make a duplicate and then you can just kind of reduce. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just reducing this down because I'm trying to get to a quick little mesh that I, because it's all dynameshed uh, together, um, decimated together. So now I'm just trying to go to a lower level version to get to a quick Z remesh because I don't need 4 million polys or whatever um, for what I'm about to do. Uh, it should be a little bit faster. I'm surprised it's actually taken this long, but, but, uh, hey, what's up, Dante? How you doing, man? Come on. Watch, this is where it hangs. It does 17 million, but, okay, there it goes. Yeah, and Boolean is actually pretty powerful. I haven't had a chance to kind of use it as much, um, and I, I have used the um, sculptures, you know, when I'm kind of creating this. But uh, a lot of times I have a tendency to just kind of stick to my old ways. I've got to start learning a few different things. So sorry, this is taking a little bit longer, guys. Yep. He's talking about, like, if you're going to be taking out, like, let's say if I want to you know put something uh going through the head then when it's a white poly group that's actually a, a retractive it's going to take it out entirely you can do that little trick for um 3d printing and stuff like that if you want to hollow out you can actually hollow out to a certain uh, thickness as well too okay i don't know why that did that but let's go ahead and now that i've i'm going to decimate this down 20%. I'm going to go down a little bit further. Okay. So, just going to make a quick duplicate of that. This is where now that I've got it so low, I have my uh, symmetry on. I'm just going to zebra mesh. I'm just going to knock this down to about one. Okay. And I'm just going to do a quick zebra mesh. Um, and again, this is a sloppy way of doing it. I'm just showing you guys. Um, like a technique to get into the substance um, painter and actually do that. Now there is, um, so you see right there, it's pretty low. It's also separated. I could keep it to where it's actually separated poly groups, or I can dynamesh this one right together quickly. Let's do 512. Let's see how that looks. And what that's going to do is this is going to make it all one pretty messy. So I'm going to go to 1024. So what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to clean this up a little bit. So now this is all one mesh. It still has the poly paint, but I'm not really worried about that. I'm just trying to merge everything together. And then I'm going to do a zebra mesh off of this sucker. And because I dynamesh that a little bit higher, it's no longer separate so, uh, poly groups. It's all one. So I'm pretty much making this a watertight mesh. This is how I do it also for 3D printing. And so then there is my nice cleaned up zebra mesh. This is actually a pretty nice... Uh, Zero mesh. It's good quad flow. So I would take something like this. There's a few little areas like in the nose and some stuff I'd clean up. If I have an inner mouth, I would do like a mouth bag and everything else. So once I have this, I'm going to go ahead and just make a, another duplicate. And I'm going to... Let me go ahead and just switch back. I'm going to go to something called... Turn off Dynamesh. And I'm going to go to UV Master. And I'm going to... Um, Right now, I mean, this is pretty low. It has nothing. I'm going to click on and control, enable control painting. I'm just going to track from my ambient occlusion. So it's pretty much wherever it's ambient occluded, it's going to kind of create seams or figure out where it's going to split apart. Um, 
I'm going to do unwrap and I'm just going to let it go through really quickly and it's just unwrapping. Now they got a new thing called UV peel that's coming. It's not quite out. Um, and when you hit flatten, you're actually going to see how it kind of split it up and just did a really quick um, way to do it. So, I mean, the head is here. Here's the jaw looks like and then that's the top and then that's our top of the head flipped and stuff. So we'll see it here in a second. So unflatten. You could also... Within here, if you turn off enable control, uh, I mean, uh, instead of the imp track from that, you could actually say, you know what, I'm going to protect, and you can say, I want to protect this little area from the face. I want this section here. Um, sorry, it should be, yeah, protect. So you're saying I don't want, I want this to be pretty much the main section that I want to keep and I'm going to attract this is where I want the UVs to kind of split and you can say um, unwrap from that and then it will give you a different algorithm and then to do that so once you do flatten as you can see right there it kind of pretty much try to keep it and split okay so before like I said UV peels a hell of a lot stronger they're gonna do a lot of different things to it um, but however you want to do that, that's fine. Um, so I'm going to copy UVs. Okay, and then you can just, usually they make a, a duplicate or like it makes a copy. Uh, so I'm just kind of showing you like if you have a copy and you want to put it into your original um, thing, you're just going to still paste UVs. And to check this, to actually see if it's worked, you're going to go down past deformation to past UVs, uh, polygroups, and you're going to go to um, texture map. And you can just say new from polypaint. And then once you have the polypaint on it, you'll see there, you can say new from masking, new from UV map. And then this UV map, you can actually see how it's broken down. So um, just turn that off. So once I have this information, I'm going to take, um, that's the, Three million here. I'm going to keep this, select that, and I'm going to make sure that when I project, um, I have Z add RGB on. Okay, and I'm going to go down to project and say project all. Okay, and so if I hit solo, so now that has the poly paint fairly well. I'm going to control D to add another division, I'm going to say project all. I turn that back on. So you have to make sure that you, so what I'm doing is I'm taking the high poly information and I'm just dividing it and I'm going to go ahead and project the high poly information to the low poly that I have with proper UVs. Those UVs are, are crap, so don't worry about it. So you can actually um, do some better ones. And as you see right now, I'm at 99. So I'm going to go up one more. Um, and with, the reason I'm showing you this one right here um, is because I'm going to show you how ZBrush, you can actually get your normal maps and everything. This is where you can pull it from normal maps, but I'm going to bake everything in Substance Painter, but I'm just showing you a different process um, as well as soon as this is done. Uh, Dante, yeah, I like to use triangles, um, to be quite honest. Uh, but everything is quads now, so... So this one right here, guys, actually has the different levels. If I go up and down, and and if you notice, something's got lost. Um, so on your projection, but I'm not the way I'm going to do it. I'm not really worried about that because I'm just going to be exporting this. But I want to show you down a normal map here. It needs the information, and you can just say create normal map, and it will take the high poly information you have on this object and bring it down into here. So that's one way you can actually get it. You can actually get your displacement map the same way, create displacement from your high polys down to here if you really want to do that and you just export that out properly. So if I do not want to do it that way, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to now take this tool, export, and I'm going to export this into my a folder. Um, I have it over here and I'm just going to call it um, uh, alien, and I, I usually just say low poly casting um, to let me know that I have this is my casting object, and then I'm going to go back up to um, my three million part. I mean, I can go down to my 300 and whatever 
if, if you take a look at the difference, you can actually see the breakdown on here. This is before I dynameshed it, and I have a lot more detail there. Otherwise, these two are looking fairly, fairly close. For speed, I'm just going to go ahead and do this one, and I'm just going to go after that saves. And I'm going to go tool, export, and I'm going to call the exact same alien, but I'm going to call it high poly. Okay. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking a version of the high poly, and I'm taking a version of the low poly, and I'm casting it out. So now I'm going to go ahead and launch into Substance Painter. And I'm just going to close. Um, yeah, it's, you, know, you guys are keeping with it pretty well, so it's pretty good. Um, you can contact me through my emails, uh, Carlos, and a couple of ones I gave on my listings in the beginning. You could also find me through ZBrush and stuff. And um, Yeah, anything I create, I mean, I can make this into a game. I mean, you just it's the poly count. So uh, you, the low poly is what you want to bring in, and that's what's going to be set up for the game and for animators to rig them so you don't want to be super intensive. Movies, you have a lot higher polys, um, so on. So once I have this, I'm just going to save File New. And so this is called Substance Painter, which is great. Both ZBrush and Substance are is phenomenal. I like ZBrush. I like painting in ZBrush, and I just bring that in, and I have that information into my map. Uh, Substance is what I use for a lot of low-poly stuff, and I jump back and forth into ZBrush and, and Substance. So I'm showing you this because it's 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 uh, usable with it. So select the template. You can actually bring it in. You can do Adobe Dimension, Dota, you know, PBR, Metal, Unity, all like different stuff. Don't you could just keep it as base. And I'm going to go select, and I'm going to go over to my ZBrush file that I had. I'm going to bring in my low poly version. Okay. Um, I don't want to create a texture set per UDIM. What this is is basically it breaks down your know, texture into tons of tiny little dots or like boxes and stuff like that. We created a UV. This is where you create proper UVs. Um, I don't have any cameras, but you can keep that default documentation resolution. Um, this is just going to be like uh, 4K, so 4096 by 4096 textures are going to be created. So if your system isn't really good, kind of try to, you can always just bring this down to 2048 if you're really um, worried about it. Or, you know, if you're brave, uh, you can keep it at 4K if you can just see how it works, because um, it could actually kick out 8K maps. This is all in it. You can change this, uh, which is pretty cool in substance. And then you have the normal map folder. You have DirectX or you have OpenGL, just two different uh, types of mathematical rendering of your normal maps and stuff like that um so you just find out which one you're going which game is going to because some are direct text and some are open gl and then you're just going to say import mesh normal maps and baked for all we're going to be using this really quickly just to bake it so i'm just going to say okay and it's going to bring in my object itself okay this is the character that we have that's the low poly as you see and i'm not going too much into uh the details i'm just showing you guys when you get into this, how to bake your high poly information, the poly paint, everything else I just got from ZBrush. So in here on your side in your shader settings, you're going to actually see something called bake mesh 3D maps, or you bake your mesh maps. And when you click on it, it's going to open up a separate window called baking. Your output size, again, this is whatever you want your information to be. I want 4K to 2K. I'm fine with that. Do you want normal map, which is, you know, you can click on those each individual maps if you want. Um, if you, you know, want world space uh, normals, IDs, if you, your ID is pretty much going to be where we're going to be pulling the poly paint information from the high poly. So we want to keep this on ambient occlusion, curvature, position, and thickness. These things are pretty important for if you're going to be painting within Z, uh, substance. Um, and that's going to be utilizing. So you want to keep these on. It doesn't take that long to do it. If you have a cage from a different program like Max or Maya, you can bring those in. Um, keep everything kind of basic uh, default unless you have issues. Unless you can start playing with some of the different, you know, ignore back face and you can change the max distance. Um, what these are is that you have your object itself. Just think of tiny little cameras just coming up from the high poly and the low poly. If you have any issue from the high poly information getting to the low poly, that might be because the low poly and high poly are not you know the high poly is over here and it's not quite casting so you have to take a camera a little bit farther out to take a picture of the high poly to cast it onto the low poly we are tricking all that cool information from 
the high poly. We're trying to take all that information to the low poly and make it look the same. This is the tricks that come into it. Um, this is where you have to have a nice low poly to, to fake out because you're going from millions of polys to thousands of polys and trying to make it look the same. This is where techniques and training and all kind of stuff comes into it. It's kind of a bear. Um, this is your default material. I could always change, change this if I want to change the name. I'm just going to say um, big default material maps. If you have a couple different objects, it's a material. It goes off of the material that you have assigned to it. So if you have an object with, like let's say if I separated the skull uh, from the head and kind of stuff, I just have to have a different material ID information to the skull piece, to the head piece. And then I'm going to say bake all materials. It's going to go through and um, give it a second and it's going to take that high poly information and throw it onto it. Unless I forget to actually tell where the high poly information is coming from, um, which it didn't do. So it created a fake. So um, as you see right there, it's going off of whatever I had originally on that. So let's go back and say, because what it did when it has nothing in here, it's going to take whatever low poly you have and just kind of take itself and throw it onto it. So I've seen people do this and they kind of like, hey, I got my maps, they look like crap. Well, because you need to bring in your high poly mesh that you did to cast that information. So again, um, high poly casting. I'm bringing in that mesh, the high poly ZBrush that I decimated to bring into it, and I'm going to say bring from that. If you have different objects, uh, like if I had separated the high poly and all that kind of stuff and broken up, you have to make sure that you assign, you bring in every single piece that you want to cast the low poly. I'm going to say bake that mesh again, and then it's going to take that high poly from ZBrush. It's going to take... Uh, all that information, pop it to the UVs that we quickly did in UV Master and to the low poly, and then it's going to make the magic of, you know, whatever information that we have from this. So again, I'm using the, the poly paint and ZBrush to kind of make myself a little bit easier. Like the, the Z remesher did a beautiful job um, to actually create a lot of this stuff. I, I still would do some different tricks to actually make the, um, um, you know, the... The flow for the, the mouth for the animators to make it animated, do a couple different things, a lot of different tricks that you, but you can also tell ZBrush to, to kind of control those loops and everything else. Um, so now that I have that information, um, my color map for some reason did not turn up on my high poly. So let's double check. Um, it should have. So, because it gave me. Let's see. So if we go to textures, these are the ones that are casted. So there is my um, AO. This is my curvature that I got from the map. And my color map from mesh detail did not work. So it grabbed everything else, which is weird. So let's go back and do this again. Turn this on and export that high poly. And I'm going to re export that sucker out with my high poly information. Okay, and let's go back to Substance Painter and let's go to Bake. And it should keep all that information so we should be able to bake again. And it's gonna take that, hopefully, the exported UVs and throw it into it, so. And there's a lot of different stuff. Um, yeah, you can bake different types of ZBrush poly groups and all that stuff within, within here. This is just, I'm grabbing, um, Come on. And then there's my material ID. Okay. So now it throw it up. So you need to make sure that you have within ZBrush this selected whenever you expect uh, export it. Because this basically says my poly groups are on or my poly paint's on, my poly paint's off. So, so how's it going, smart artist? Yeah, I mean, you could actually set your different IDs and, and um, what I usually do within uh, Photoshop, I'll actually create a different ID. So anything that this, um, you know, my skull piece that I want for my flesh, I would actually paint a solid color and those would be ID. Right now, I'm just treating this ID as I'm just getting the diffuse information from my high poly right now. Usually what happens is in your ID maps will actually be a whole bunch of just solid colors that separate. So the eye would be like a green and the skin would be blue and then the skull would be red. And so then that way within Substance, it just separates the material hits. So I could just say when I'm clothing uh, the objects and materials. I'm not going to do too much. And I was just wanted to show you guys because a lot of people were asking me about the low poly process. To get to this, um, 
it would take me hours and hours to go over top of everything. So this is a whole different level. High poly, low poly, unwrapping, texturing, in-game assets, making it all look good is just a, I mean, it's it's sweeping. I mean, even concept in all the way. And I've been very lucky to do from concept to final in-game assets a lot, but it takes some time. Uh, just to show my, my uh, poly paint on this really quickly, I'm just going to go ahead and just delete this layer. And I'm going to, there's different layers. You have uh, a layer that actually is trans um, transparent. And then I'm just going to go to an add fill layer. And so what this fill layer does, it um, it's going to allow me to kind of pull and pop it right onto it. So now I have that diffuse. So that's my diffuse map. And then, then I can start painting. Um, you know, and usually I just say this is my diffuse from ZBrush, and then I can just go um, add like a smart material, and I can just toss on some different um, the, the like let's say if I want to add like a little bit of skin feverish to the sucker, I could just pop that on, and then it goes on and on and on, and then you know you can transfer it, or you could you could turn down on the base level. I can turn this down to zero. I can go to my you know, roughness, and I can. Um, make it a lot higher and sweaty and I can do a lot of different stuff um, but I'm bringing in some of the detail there's there's a lot to go into these things but um, so that's part of just bringing this uh, from ZBrush to substance and um, but yeah that's that's pretty much it and once you're done with this then you're just gonna go up and you're gonna export your textures and you can assign and you know, separate them to like Unreal and a whole bunch of different, you know, uh, Dota uh, engines and, and uh, after you do your painting. But um, but I always use this as a base and then this is usually how I start and then I'm into substance. So, but um, yeah, and you could also, uh, you know, paint. Like if I add a fill layer mask, um, and we just add a paint. So this is where you can start painting onto that object or whatever. Or let's say I just want to do my roughness. Um, so let's say I didn't want to have any color or my roughness. I want I want to make them really sweaty. Um, and I can actually just go to my roughness, create a paint on here, and I can come in here and say I want this to be super super shiny. Let me go up to here first. I want to turn off color. I don't want color. I just want to. I just want to make certain things really wet in certain areas, like his eyes or even his whole skin. So that's where you can start painting your roughness. Or I can go into here and say I don't want to have. Um, I want to take out some of the roughness, the shininess. Then you can go in here and make it flat so to emphasize certain shiny areas on the object that's the great thing about substance because you're painting uh in roughness metallic diffuse all whatever maps and stuff you want to do at the same time it will it will uh, allow you to do quite a bit so going back to zbrush once i have this object um i'm going to go back to my posing um and let's finish this guy off so I'm going to just say tool, save as. Because, um, again, I've showed you guys quite a, a few different things, but I always like to say if you're going to sit there and pose, uh, it's pretty neat because you, you have the sub-tool master, um, transpose master is uh, what we're looking at. I'm just going to T-pose, and it's going to go through. As long as those different layers are set up, I can quickly just, you know, say I'm going to, let's say mask. And this guy's a little bit, you know, um, separated. So I just want to like turn his neck. So I'm going to keep his neck solid. I'm just going to use the move tool, and I'm just going to do some slight variation. Again, not not much, because what you're doing, if if you do want to do more, you can just hold down uh, Control and just blend. So that what that does is it doesn't it it starts to blend between the the different pieces and it just allows you to have a little bit more natural look so let's say that's all i wanted to do you could pose them however you want just like you were saying uh, somebody was asking about rigging this is sort of an effect that i'm kind of i not need an animator to, to rig and pose them and i can sit there and quickly um 
do them like such. I'm just going to go through the different pieces and then hopefully transfer all that information. And boop, boop, boop. Okay. And so now he's posed. Okay. And then I'll, I usually just say save as and I'll just um, uh, call it posed or whatever. That way I don't overwrite accidentally my uh, uh, symmetry thing. And then, uh, then once it's in a pose, whatever, you can do whatever. But, but let's go ahead and it should keep all that information that you have. So let's finish this up. And then, so if there's any more questions, sorry guys, I was, I got kind of lost here. And then it's, you know, somebody kept, kept saying, like, uh, where I should show from where I came from, uh, which is true, I should show on here. So this is where we started. Started from a nice little guy. So that's where we started from. remember and then uh, all I did was do control snap to kind of because um, this one's still active as soon as I hit control s it's gonna snapshot that object and be all done but so let me double check sorry oh yeah and by, and by the way uh, so sad I missed some of the stuff you guys were saying to me yeah I, I, that's the thing it's like all these programs are phenomenal but you don't need to know everything in the programs. I'm only using 20% of the power of ZBrush and it blows my mind, okay? Same thing for, for Substance. When I'm showing you these things, use exactly what you need to get your job done and get out. I do not need to know how lighting works. I don't know how normal works. It's just magic, little fairies do it and I don't mess with it, you know what I mean? I don't have to know every single piece of something to make sure that I'm doing my job. No, what I need to do my job, I need to know that. And that's pretty much where, again, that's the level I go. But the reason I show you guys a lot of, of just these steps is because I want you to just relax and not worry about all the different brushes and worry about all the different techniques and stuff. And Because it, it's just, you need to just get in and get out when you're creating creatures and just have some fun. And then whatever techniques you have to know, you just slowly build onto them. But... Um, Oh, 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 yeah. Uh, somebody's asking about, um, I'm sorry, uh, Prejay's asking about the different materials. So if you hit, like right now, this is, um, uh, I'm, I was doing ZBrush stuff. If I hit the, the C key, it's going to cycle through. So there's my default um, base color right here. So this is everything that's transferred from ZBrush. This, I'm in Substance again, Sky, here's real quick. Um, this is going to be metallic. I have no metallic. Metallic is going to really separate organics from hard surface and my guy's pretty much organic so I have really no metallic uh, there's my roughness that's why I was just showing you that's the different color and again this will all vary and change and that basically will tell the difference between something flat and shiny um, this is my normal I don't have any normal information it's different from this one if I'm adding any kind of normals to this normal um, that's my height I have no height information that it kind of fakes out any kind of depth off of the poly there is my normal uh, plus my height, plus my mesh. That's what you're seeing. Um, and these are just the masks, uh, which I have right there, which is that black one. And then if you hit M for, that's your whole material key. Um, and and this is also, it's really, um, depending on your different, um, let's see up in here. There's a lot of different ways you can go. Your HDRI maps, which is basically your high definition rendering maps, uh, that allows your background. So if you throw on a different, a map it will change the way this looks just like a different material within zbrush and stuff so but that's just pretty much some of it guys there's a lot more so um i think we did pretty good actually i think this is the longest stream i went to so i'm sorry for the length um sorry for the dogs barking and stuff um and then yeah i, I mean there's different techniques you can learn and, and i jump back and forth what i showed you for the high poly decimating to do the z remesh and all kind of stuff that's the techniques i use if i want something triangulated what i do is i use the decimated mesh um just like i showed you uh, for the high poly but i go down to like 0 0.01 so i actually go down into the low poly level details but i try to keep all the triangulated edges from the decimated mesh to kind of help me with my silhouette because 
um, the new thing is quads. Everything has to be quads. And that's just because the animator wants to click on a, a edge and be able to loop it and make their job easier. To me, silhouette is king, so I have a tendency to still touch into the the edges. And if it's something um, needs to move, though, you need it quads. So you need loops in your shoulders and everything properly, and, and it goes on and on. Um, but if something's solid, like a helmet, it, you know, it doesn't need to have quads. It could just be um, done. But again, that's a lot of different techniques and stuff. And I've taught I've taught online for quite a while to go through that whole process. So it takes a little bit. So I'm trying to keep everything in kind of ZBrush. Maybe I'll do more personal streams and, and build up some stuff for people to follow to talk further. Uh, but usually I, I get paid to do that kind of stuff So <laughs> to teach. And I am planning to do a class probably pretty soon. I'm just trying to get a lot of the different students to where I'll teach you guys the basics from start to finish concept all the way through the final in-game assets. Uh, because I know um, I see a lot of students go down the wrong path. And I'd rather you guys uh, know what you're doing because one, it hurts my industry, um, hurts our industries. If you have somebody coming in that is like a bull in a china shop. So, but um, hopefully that you guys enjoyed your time. I appreciate it. If there's anything else, drop me a line. You guys know my emails um, at the front. And uh, thanks again for joining, guys. And you have a great weekend and stay safe in California, guys. Uh, hopefully those fires stay out soon. So, thanks much, guys.